After 214 points and 28 tries in the first four games, tonight here in Sydney, the Lions are looking for a proper test ahead of the Wallabies next weekend. 12 years ago, against the Waratahs, they got just that and a whole lot more. The Sydney Football Stadium, the perfect setting. It's a rough old wall down there. And it's now a bear pit. Well, Ronan O'Gara got a right pace to now. No place for that. No place. There has been a premeditated campaign. A campaign to destabilise the Lions. Well, so far this time, Sydney has been extremely welcoming to the Lions Tour Party. They've been up, out and about, taking in the sights and the opportunities. Things off the field have come together really well. The players have spoken of a strong bond that has formed quickly and it will certainly be called upon as the challenges of this tour increase towards the inevitable crescendo. And with Australia looming into view and with test places up for grabs, the pressure is building all the time, particularly on the captain, Sam Warburton has been told he will only be selected for the first test on form and as an open side. Today, the perfect stage to show he's ready, and this is the team he leads. Well, perhaps because of the memories of 2001, the sellout signs went up earlier this week at the Allianz Stadium, and we have live and exclusive coverage for you online, on SkyGo, and in high definition. The Tars have taken some big scalps in Super Rugby this year, and they are relishing the chance to make history today, and that is just what the Lions are after. We want it to be as tough as it possibly can. We really want them to, to come at us. You know, we're going to have to soak up some pressure. We're not going to dominate and have the ball for the full 80 minutes. So, you know, a good hit out, a good workout is going to be going to be really tough. And we just hope it doesn't end up like it did 12 years ago. I mean, we want it to be tough and physical, but within the the um, the parameters of the law. And uh, you know, the harder and more physical it is, the, the better prepared. Hopefully, it's going to help us for next week. Thanks, Warren. Cheers, Miles. Thank you. Well, a very good morning to you all back home. What a big seven days in store for Warren Gatlin and his men as they build towards Brisbane. And as he said, a win today, key to maintaining momentum. With us today, three men who know exactly what it's like to get ready for a first Lions test. Paul Wallace, Scott Quinnell and Will Green. But, Will, you've obviously been out here since the start. Thanks for having us at your party. But does it feel today like we go up a gear? Absolutely. It's been simmering along very nicely. Some nice runouts for the teams. Um, some good wins under the belt. But as you get close to the test match, for selectors, there's fewer chances to tinker. For players, there's fewer chances to show your wares. And in terms of the fans, the atmosphere around Sydney is bubbling and the fancy dress shops are running amok. There are lion suits everywhere. Absolutely. A real sparkle around the SFS, I think it's fair to say. But in terms of the Lions, who today is playing for a test place, do you feel? I feel that Jamie Heaslip, that battle with Toby Falato is going to be absolutely huge. And as well, I've asked questions over the last couple of weeks with Tom Croft coming number six. Those are going to be answered today. Can they play together? They need a contact area that's going to be as intense as a test match today. So we'll find out those answers. Yeah. Uh, and another player, Tom Youngs. I think it's a big opportunity for him. The line out is a, a, a special ball off the back is very important to the Lions game plan. His relationship with Tom Croft is very important that Leicester relationship and I think if they can get that right and get the Lions game plan going and maybe even squeeze them in ahead of Hibbert and Rory Best. And a quick word about 9 and 10, many people do expect them to start but important yes. for them just to make sure they're on the same wavelength. Absolutely, feel comfortable with each other, understand, get the team in the right areas of the field and get that back line going. Good stuff guys, thank you very much indeed. Short and sweet I'm afraid from us at the top but here we go with Game 5 of the 2013 Lions Tour with match commentary from Stuart Barnes and Miles Harrison. And a week from now, we will be half an hour away from the first test kickoff, an exciting but also mind focusing thought. And if this is the dress rehearsal, the Lions will not want to get their lines wrong tonight. But even at this stage, for many, it is still a case of seeing if the costume fits. But everything needs to start to fall into place now. The management know it, the players know it, and the Lions do not want to get caught as they were in the first 20 minutes last week against the Reds.
the Lions team and Mako Vunapola came on this tour with most pundits thinking he'd be super sub. Well, maybe not now. What a chance. Adam Jones, most people's favourite for test starting tight head Tom Youngs, today's hooker. Alwyn Jones, Paul O'Connell, are we looking at the 2009 test lock pairing being reunited again this week and next? The back row selection, not so much a headache, but a full-on migraine. Today it's Tom Croft, Captain Sam Warburton and Jamie Heaslip. Mike Phillips and Johnny Sexton, perhaps the most nailed-on department, but Sexton will be wanting to prove his fitness. Jamie Roberts with Jonathan Davies as Brian O'Driscoll is given a rest. And the back three, Tommy Bow, injured, George North, worryingly a bit of a doubt now too. What a chance then for Sean Maitland and Simon Zebo straight into action. Lee Halfpenny, test winning qualities with his boot at full back. To the Waratahs, minus eight Wallabies now in the national squad, two more injured, but still looking a more than useful unit. Jeremy Tills, the capped Paddy Ryan, and John Olungia form a second string but a very good front row. Will Skelton, Ollie Atkins would not normally start either but they are a very promising young pair of locks. The back row, another rising star, Jed Holloway, he's at six. Pat McCutcheon back from injury at seven. Dave Dennis released by the Wallabies, captain and number eight. So strengthen there and at half back two. Brendan McGibbon is joined by his regular partner Bernard Foley, released by the Australian Seven squad. Tom Carter, captain versus the force a week ago, partnered by another release wallaby, Rob Horn. And the back three has great attacking possibilities, just like the Reds last week. Peter Beetham, Cam Crawford, and the side's most experienced international talent, Drew Mitchell. Replacements, the Lions include Rob Carney for the first time on tour. The Leinsterman has had to be patient as his hamstring repaired. It's the first time that the Waratahs, even some of the most experienced, have played at a sold-out, brimful Sydney football stadium. But the Lions are in town. And there are many more Lions flocking in day by day. It's a big match feel all the way now just as it was in Brisbane seven days ago and this undoubtedly a key moment in this Lions trip the fine-tuning of a team capable of winning a test coming together now well the Waratahs have a back line to trouble the Lions but whilst they have plenty of size and potential in the front five a marked lack of experience but surely deliver the Lions type five a decisive edge on the front foot much is expected of a high quality back row that could feasibly play in Brisbane. If the back row could start, the half-backs should. Mike Phillips and Johnny Sexton are a lovely blend of strength and subtlety. Potentially, the Lions series would in combination. The Waratahs looked to rough up the Lions 12 years ago, famously. Michael Checker has said that approach is not on the menu tonight. But you do know with a Checker team, and we've seen it all the way through their Super Rugby this season, that there will be maximum effort and desire being put into this opportunity to get stuck into the tourist for the Waratahs' own aims, for their nation's aims too. Twelve years ago, Duncan McRae was a real thorn in the Lions' side. Foley might be for a very different reason. He's got the sort of running game to test Sam Warburton and he's got enough variety to ask questions of the Lions' defensive system. Exactly what is required seven days before that first test in Brisbane. Sam Warburton knows that the captaincy does not buy him a test place. I'm sure he wouldn't want it any other way. The referee is Jaco Paper of South Africa, the country where the Lions last played a test match four years ago. In seven days, they play one again. And if this is the nucleus of that team, well, the Lions need this to be a good night. Not essential, but overwhelmingly preferable. A sold-out Sydney football stadium. A great sporting sight. And the Waratahs keen to strike a blow. The Reds couldn't quite do it last week. Here we go with Johnny Sexton. 
and taken by big Will Skelton. He was 150 kilograms at school, bigger than Wycliffe Parlu. There's a famous picture of the two from his school days. McGibbon and Foley back together at halfback. Foley recalled from the Wallabies 7 squad for the World Cup 7s. Lee Halfpenny scored a try against the combined country. Sexton again, all the space on this side for Jonathan Davis. Zebo's first touch, first touch for the Lions. Oh, what a story! Simon Zebo can hardly believe it, nor can his teammates. If it's given, that is beyond a dream start. Even the referee can smile. but it will be checked by the television match official, Keith Brown. Simon Zebo, just watch that foot. No. Oh, he's touched the line. No it's try. not a dream. It's a brilliant tackle from Drew Mitchell, the most experienced Waratah. What a wonderful start, though, to the Lions. All but the final touchdown. Brilliant midfield play. Sexton with the ball deep. Jamie Roberts was the decoy. He held all of the Waratah's defence. And it took a blinding tackle from Mitchell to stop Zebo scoring in the corner. Yeah, have a decision. The Brilliant player defense. is in touch. Brilliant attack in play. No try and touch. Well, they say you can start too well. I'm not sure Simon Zebo would agree. Anyway, promising for the Lions. No doubt about that. Jed Holloway brings it away. Good, strong drive by Olungia. We see that time and time again when he comes off the bench in Super Rugby for Tatafu Pelota now, who, of course, is out of this match, out of the series, with that broken arm. On the touchline for us again tonight, it's Will Greenwood. Really threatening back play for that first opportunity. Sexton so flat. Roberts needs a big game to cement his first test place. Davies around the corner, brilliant hands, almost a perfect start. Tom Young's to throw. Lions will be looking for a better line out than the one we saw in midweek in Newcastle. But of course, they're keeping things under wraps at the moment. We all know that too. Tom Young's, well, he was wrapped up there, but the referee didn't like it. Carter's a very aggressive centre. Pat McCutcheon just having a word with Jaco Pepper. What a start for Roberts, we've seen him as the decoy player, and then he came out to in. He wears 12, but off attacking set-piece, he stands outside centre, and he comes back at an angle, did it again. Here's Youngs being tackled and put down by Carter, no doubt about that, it's a penalty, it's no more than that. Strong defensive play there from Rob Horn, he is a tough man. Yes, it was Horn in with the tackle, one of the two returning Wallabies, and Sam Warburton, as captain, felt it necessary just to make a point. Of course, he knows all about the tip tackle, does Sam Warburton. Rob Horn, 14 caps for Australia. And down from the Sunshine Coast, and away from the Wallaby squad. Here's Lee Halfpenny. At 11 versus... Uh, Nothing on the other side of the piece of paper against the force. Missed one against the country, but the only one he's missed thus far on tour. Halfpenny gets another. So they didn't quite get the Zebo try, but it is first points to the Lions from the boot, the very reliable boot of Lee Halfpenny. Very good start from the Lions. Excellent balance of play. Power from Robert. Subtle passing from Sexton, everything we've been looking for. If they can win some quick ball now, break down and get Mike Phillips going, I think Gatlin by the end of this game will be very pleased with where he is behind the scrum. Foley restarts. The fast start that the Reds got last week. Well, the Lions have a fast start of their own this week. Against the other traditional giant in Australian rugby union. New South Wales, Mike Phillips. 
I did the bridge walk the other day, that went almost as high. Drew Mitchell, his farewell game at this stadium before he goes to Toulon. Skelton, they'll do well to put him down. Also watch for Skelton when he tries to split any driving more. Speciality of his is Tom Carter, his brother Ed, played against the Lions off the bench 12 years ago. Tom was in the stand to watch it. On the field tonight, here's Drew Mitchell. Paul O'Connell driven off the ball that time. McGibbon to Foley. Well, Alan Wynne Jones, he was doing the driving. Picked up by Ollie Atkins. McKibben and Foley. Then it's McCutcheon. Missed last week with that knee injury. Had a devastating ankle injury last year, which ended ruined this year. Half penny. Gone very long. Peter Beetham. All charged down again. Half penny after his own kick. Back goes Mitchell. He's so calm. He looked brilliant in training on Wednesday, didn't he, Stewart? And, well, I thought he was going to go out. We'll come to Stewart on that in a moment. But here's Zebo. Jonathan Davies again finding himself in a little bit of space on this side. Inside to Sexton. This time the Lions score in the corner. Johnny Sexton can celebrate. And the Lions machine, which needs to start to roll today, is doing so. A little bit like Tuesday, the inferior combined country team kicked badly and they didn't put the press on the chase. Robbie Dean's watching on will know when Australia kick, you've got to come up faster. Sexton and Maitland first of all to Zebo. There's so much pace and width here. Jonathan Davis has had a really good, quiet start to this tour. He's making tries and scoring them. And Sexton, the second pass in the counter-attacking move, his running line is superb. Davis goes wide to pull the cover, draws two men, and Sexton is in for the score. It's a really good start for the Lions. Alan wynne Joe is making hits all over the place. Robert, he thundered into a tackle after his two early runs. Sexton all over the place, and a lovely counter-attacking try. It could not be a better start for the men in red. And couldn't be better. And no signs of that Sexton hamstring at all, and he gave it a good stretch down the touchline. And having given Mitchell the big up, it was not a good kick. And counter-attack ball, which Northern Hemisphere teams normally have to be wary of, giving away moments like that. Well, the Waratahs have given the Lions this chance to create a 10-0 lead, courtesy of Halfpenny's brilliant conversion. Yeah, the, the hands have been lovely from the Lions, but the defence down here at ground level is huge. As Barnes is saying, when Jones, Roberts, Croft clattering into people, forcing Waratahs to kick badly. Seems a step up physically from anything we've seen from the Lions today. And Foley's restart, not a bad one in the end. There he is again. McGibbon to Mitchell. Skelton gets help from Atkins. And his gap here played with Edinburgh Ackes. We're given again to Foley. Here's Mitchell. One of the great finishers for Wallabies over the years. 30 tries and his 63 caps during Mitchell, but it's really the Waratahs' first attack of the match. And approaching the 10-minute uh, mark. It's been all the lines so far. And key 10, the 10 points. Beatham stopped by Tom Croft, backing up the boys' point about the defence. Skelton off to Paddy Ryan. McGibbon, but Yako Paper is holding on. The Lions were trying to contest it, and they really are contesting, aren't they? Yeah, they're not making tackles. What they're doing, they're driving people backwards in the tackle, and that makes it impossible for the Waratahs to get any front football, and it makes it so hard for Bernard Foley to impose his own style on this game. Drew Mitchell has made a, a fabulous, brave start at the back for the Waratahs, but he must be looking in front of him thinking, what the heck is coming his way tonight? If the Lions carry on like this, this will be by far the biggest statement they've made on this tour. 
Paul, Paul O'Connell breakdown again. Came on against the Queensland Reds, won penalties. That was his penalty. He won it with a fingernail. The ferocity from the Lions in the opening ten, outstanding. Tom Young's to throw. And Paul O'Connell looking so comfortable in his own skin, his leadership skills being used on this tour. Even though he's not the tour captain as he was last time. There is the tour captain this time, Sam Warburton. Ah, the, my the mysterious drive that we haven't seen much of until now. And Skelton tried to split it, but he was very much on his own. Phillips to Zebo. Into midfield in the hands of Jamie Heaslip. Phillips wants it again, and it's back to Zebo and Vunipola, who's been really good in the loose on this tour. Should be a try. Also bad in the scrum. Here's O'Connell. Here's Roberts. But it's not a try. As Roberts has the ball dislodged. Well, with plenty of numbers. And the Lions, who wasted a few chances against the Reds in their other major test on this tour. Well, they should have scored a try here. It was brilliant foundation work from the forward. Club combination of Youngs and Croft working well. Warburton lets it go early. The Waratahs expect European teams to go until it stops. They don't. Once again, the hero of the moment is Drew Mitchell. Out muscles Jamie Roberts. The ball breaks loose. Tars scrum. Mitchell is fighting an incredible back foot battle at the moment for the Tars. This Israel Falau has been getting all the headlines with the Waratahs this season. Drew Mitchell, so versatile. Wing, fullback. Just concentrate though on this scrum. Again, a lot said in the media about this area of the game this week, as it will most certainly next week in the build up to a test match against the Wallabies. Well, in Europe, they like the long scrum, they like to work for penalties. Wales did exactly that against England. In Australia and Super Rugby, it's five, six seconds instead of 10, 11, and they want to get the ball away or use the bats. Will the referees allow the Lions this sort of dominance? Not that, this time. That point was also being made, wasn't it? The fact that uh, Bob Dwyer was making it very <laughs> vociferously in the media that the Lions have been driving early at the scrum. Yako Paper decides that they clearly were on that occasion and gives the free kick to the Waratahs who get a little bit of breathing space. Yeah, re referring to the article by Bob Dwyer in this morning's Australian where he accused the Lions of being a team of cheats, doing the sort of things that every international team has been doing since, well, Bob Dwyer was coaching, I would say. Rather amusing, he said what, what you'd expect with a New Zealander in charge, but of course Robbie Teams is in charge in Australia as well. Anyway, here comes Jamie Roberts on the crash ball. Phillips and Tom Youngs. Talk about Vunipola in the loose, but... Of course, Tom Youngs will see that as very much an asset that he has as well. Phillips again. He's lips hands onto Tom Croft. All the back row players know they have to be on fire all the time. Such is the competition. Davies pulls it back for Roberts. Roberts, though, just uses that to be able to really gallop on and use that power. Alan jones featuring heavily. Early on in this match, Adam Jones out to Johnny Sexton, the Lions try scorer. Sexton offloading well to Davies. Then it's Phillips on to Maitland, half penny. And this is Zebo. Johnny Sexton is on the floor and is hurt. Well, it was Will Skelton, the giant young second row who came through as counter attack comes. Taken quickly. Foley. Still treatment for Sexton. Here come the Waratahs with Beetham. Takes on Maitland on the outside and half beats him. Half Penny can't make the tackle. And this will be Carter. And with no Sexton, the Waratahs take full advantage. Tom Carter, as an 18 year old, watched the Lions from the stands 12 years ago. Now he's a try scorer against them. Uh, well played, Waratahs there. Sean Maitland won't enjoy this. It's a one-on-one -on -one there and beat them. Very exciting young winger. 
He's had Israel Folau hog all the headlines, but he's played really well. Skips round the tackle and then has the awareness in a packed house to just not be greedy, but to give Carter the chance. Maitland has to make the tackle. He cannot. Ball in one hand. That's a super offload there. And Carter bustles his way into the corner. It's a clever crossfield kick from Foley. We said that he has real variety in his game. There's Maitland losing Beetham. That's a super one-handed right, right-handed flip there. And Carter, big, strong, not the quickest, but no one's going to stop him. The game is alive. He rather cheekily said last week in his post-match interview after leading the side to victory, much under strength, Waratah's side to victory over the force, that the force might have been a little undercooked. Of course, he was referring to the controversial selection made by the force for the Lions game just a few days beforehand. But Tom Carter has his try now against the Lions. Sexton back on his feet, he took a nasty knock, and he was anything to do with his hamstring, and he was a blow more towards uh, the head area. Not treatment, but as that happened, the Waratahs were at the other end of the field. Here's Brendan McGibbon. Like Foley, a goal kicker, and like Foley, a very good one. So Halfpenny has started well again, and McGibbon's off to a pretty good start there from virtually on the touchline. Sexton tries to run it off, it's the Waratahs 7, the Lions 10. Waratahs really play, most line breaks in Super Rugby, most metres made, they score just under three tries a game, and Foley orchestrates most of it. Dennis. Turnover. And it came from the Wallaby. Warburton. Zebo again. When asked whether he thought he could make the test team, he said, why not? He's got confidence, he's got the personality that will thrive on tour as well. Vunapola, again, always looking to offload, even though he's being half-tackled by Foley. There's Mike Phillips. Paul O'Connell is going to act as the half-back here and does a very good job. Zebo, his monster teammate. Looks for a bit of space, looks for a man to attack as well. Good offload. Zebo is impressing. Half penny. Phillips again. Vunapola. Thought about a take and give, but that was well covered by Beetham. He was on his own momentarily, the winger there. In comes Phillips. Advantage being played. Zebo once more. How many Zebos are there? Roberts. McCutcheon tries to disrupt with a boot. It's going to be the penalty. Great defence on Jamie Roberts, he really, really did run into a brick wall. The Lions were playing the advantage. Very quick ball, love the way Simon Zebo there just came from left to right, cut the angle of the attack, always asking questions. At the moment, what the Lions are doing when they're carrying the ball, they're forcing two Waratahs into the tackle zone, and that's creating space. Zebo is doing it with his speed, Roberts with his pace. There you go, two men in, and it just creates a little bit of space elsewhere. We get the normal boo as the Lions don't go for the corner. Half penny, 7 10 up, should take three points. The mild mannered Sam Warburton, regarded as very good player at dealing with referees, Jack O'Pepper there. Didn't shrug him off, he listened to the captain and went away. Well, it was done in a very respectful way, as you'd expect from Warburton. Here's his colleague with Wales. And, of course, the Cardiff Blues as well. Sort of never in doubt from that range for half penny these days. And Warren Gatlin, Rob Howley 
will be pretty happy with this start, even though the Waratahs have a try of their own. And don't forget, I'm sure you need no reminding, but the first test coming your way from Brisbane, 10.30 a.m. your time, Sky Sports 1 HD next week. Knocked on by Cam Crawford, who chases those restarts and often gets them. Sexton, who's had some smelling salts during the last break in play. O'Connell, good hands there from O'Connell, and also Vunapola and Alan Wynne Jones. Here's half penny, looks for Zebo again. And why wouldn't they, with Zebo having got off the plane and being in fine form here? O'Connell, that's lovely hands, wasn't it? No, yeah, O'Connell started very well, hit and rucked, but his hands good. A fumble there from Mike Phillips. He feels he was interfered with. I'll just go back to Sam Orberton talking to Jacko Pepper about the referee. And this morning in the press, it's being talked about. Dwyer said Vunipola always comes in at the angle, he doesn't scrummage legally. And in this endless seeming series of skirmishes leading to the first test, it's almost as if Warburton is going public and saying, hey, it's not Mako Vunipola, it's the other tight head. Tick for tap. Uh, maybe I'm seeing too much there, but there does seem to be that degree of detail now in preparation. Australia have a pop at our loose head, we let it out to Australia that it's not us, it's them. Just to clear up that breakdown, that was a lion sock, wasn't it? They got in the way for Mike Phillips, so... Exactly right that the Waratahs get the put into the scrum, it wasn't the best scrum. And Foley fumbles around himself there, but manages to hold on to it under some pressure. Good tackle again from Tom Croft. Foley, up comes he slip, lines up Drew Mitchell. And that familiar way of his spins away from the tackle, so good at that. McCutcheon is in fact the club captain, but not the leader tonight. That honour has gone to Dave Dennis. That's a wide cut-out ball, it's a good one to find Holloway. Beatham, oh, he's threatening and Maitland's lost him again. Maitland was struggling to get back there. Worked very hard off the ball in midweek. Sean Maitland, who was picked up by the management, they made the point the other day, but he's having to work really hard against Peter Beatham. Foley. That'll bounce its way to Crawford and McCutcheon. McCutcheon takes it on. McGibbon to Foley again. Will Skelton tackled by Tom Youngs. McGibbon. Foley. Tackle there by Mike Phillips, but the Lions really having to make these tackles now. Sam Warburton puts out an arm but can't get there. Towards the Lions 22 go the Waratahs. McGibbon. And Foley out to beat them again. They feel they've got a weapon there. This time, in a tighter space, Maitland does make the tackle. Skelton still hovering around that 22-metre line. Vulipola trying to rip the ball out as well as make the tackle, and he's done well. Adam Jones goes in, but is that taking the man without the ball? It is. Well, Bernard Foley is causing the Lions no end of problems. He's looking a very composed, classy player. Adam Ashley Cooper, who will be playing outside centre, looking on Israel Folau next to him. But Foley, he's developed his game this season. His little chip kick caused problems. He's now going for the corner. One of those passes off the right hand that just outstripped the Lions was absolutely brilliant and beat them benefiting from it. And I'm certain Robbie Deans will watch the way the Lions, when they rush, have been picked off last Saturday night in Brisbane, and Foley's finding holes here. We saw Michael Hooper there as well, and now we see the big figure of Will Skelton! It's been lost. He's down to 135 kgs from 150, but that is still an awful lot to stop when he's in that mood. Uh, maybe Dennis was wanting it to be checked, but the referee absolutely certain it was lost. Well, maybe if he'd been 150 kilos, no one would have stopped him. Mike Phillips is involved in the tackle, doesn't get it down, and it just bobbles loose. Tom Griffith heavily involved. Ah, just spills, doesn't it? That, that is an experience. He's a big man with a hell of a future, but you just stay calm. You're five or six years older, you're going to get down 
but you're certainly not going to do what he did and give the Lions a real get-out clause. Okay, from good stock, his cousin is uh, Brad Meeker, former All Black lock. Now, this is a very important scrum, the kind of scrum that the Lions would want in this game. They want to test, they want to be on their own line and have to get out of here. They want it all going their own way. And they want to understand exactly how to referee Southern Hemisphere referees. He slipped. Roberts. When you've got weight like that at 12, why not use it? Mike Phillips. To Beatham and Mitchell. Stats in Super Rugby, top of the meters made, the breaks made, second in the try total, the Waratahs, they do play, but of course that runs the risk of turnover. And Jonathan Davies continues to look really good on this tour. He slipped, and then he wouldn't be alone, the Lions centre, in looking good. Tom Youngs. This against much more meaningful opposition, Bruno Pola. And again, the referee steps in to give the penalty and wants to make more of a point here to Dave Dennis. Let's listen. Yeah, no, no. Huh? What's wrong with that? Listen, after number nine passes the ball, every second ruck, a player pushes him. That stops now, or else it will be a penalty, and if it doesn't change, it'll be a yellow card. Thanks. Interesting, Sam Warburton arrived on the scene as well. First penalty is over here. Sam Warburton will be captain next Saturday. Playing number nine without the ball. End of story. It's definitely he is going to be captain. Doesn't matter what Warren Gatland says. Warburton knows he's going to captain and he will. And he's going to play like a captain. Good situation tonight because he's got all the experience of Paul O'Connell in front of him and he's got sex and leadership behind him. He can get on with playing his game and every now and again just coming up and doing those captaincy leadership things. Make it sound like that Sam Warburton's picking the tea, but I know exactly what you mean. It does matter what Warren Gatlin says, but maybe not publicly. Well, there you can see tackles made today. Tom Young's a brilliant tackler, so good there. Warburton getting around, but I think Paul O'Connell, that's significant as well. Big start to the game for a lot of players. The other thing about that array of tackles is how well are the Waratahs, with so many of their first team out, going? Struggling defensively, but with the ball in hand, Foley is orchestrating all sorts of problems. Very entertaining first 25 minutes. Falau, Ashley Cooper, Barnes. Lucky Turner's got a broken leg at the moment. That's just the backs. Robinson up front with Kepu in the front row. Second row, Douglas, Tamani. Didn't even have time to get to the back row as we watch Lee Halfpenny's excellent effort again he really is in top form isn't he and Sam Warburton at the breakdown just watching him closely might not be hitting up clearing too many but when the Lions have got the ball he seems to be the first man over the ball ready to do his job at virtually every breakdown so quietly extremely effective that's why he's going to be the Lions seven because Australia even without the likes of uh, Pocock and Higginbotham, so strong there. Technically, you've got to be good, Warburton is. Phillips kicks. Mitchell. Cam Crawford. To complete the picture for the Waratahs, Hooper and Parlour, of course, missing, and Mitchell Chapman injured. So, they're having to dig deep, but they have a deep squad. Michael Checker has moved things on a lot this season. Big strides have been made by the Waratahs under the former Leinster and Stade Francais coach. Beetham and Mitchell. Is that the first thing Drew Mitchell has done wrong? Him and Foley have been playing really well. As I said, the Waratahs, they took a fearful pounding in the first five, six minutes, but they've got a fair amount of possession and they have asked questions of the line. Yet again, you know, they, they, they got down that five-metre channel. I think Australia will be looking to keep some width, and if they can hit down the middle, they'll think 
There is space in the wide channel. Young throws up to Tom Croft. Zebo, great catch. And Mitchell has been hurt. And Phillips with no fullback there. Now is Phillips blocked by Cam Crawford. Tom Croft is after this. And putting pressure on Dave Dennis. I think the referee is interested in Mike Phillips being blocked. No, he's not. What about Drew Mitchell? Fierce collision with Zebo. It was a wonderful kick from Mike Roberts. It's the left elbow of Zebo catches Drew Mitchell. As for Mike Phillips, very astute of him. But there was no reason why Crawford had to move out of Phillips's flight path. Absolutely nothing wrong there. Just a bit of a fumble going backwards there by Dave Dennis. Very good kick from Phillips. Great chase from Zebo. And then quick wits from Mike Phillips again. Lions. Now you said about two minutes ago, Miles, exactly. they want scrums five minutes out. Even more importantly with the first test, they want to be good on offensive scrums five metres out. This is an area where they perceive themselves to have an advantage over Australia. Big scrum. They have to be brutal here. Defence turns into attack at the scrum. Can they use it wisely and powerfully? Oh, look at that going through. But then the ball was left behind. It was almost too powerful, that line scrum. Sexton goes back. Oh, that's pretty brutal at the breakdown. McCutcheon seeing to that, but Phillips has sorted it. And Heaslip was there as well. well. Heaslip has a bit to atone for there. That is a big black cross against him, that control at the base of the line out. Here's Warburton to Alan Wynne Jones. Goes for the handoff. Phillips looking at the referee, but the ball was there as well. And he saw it in the nick of time. Paul O'Connell, both second rows, carrying really well. Vunapola too. In goes Adam Jones. He's just on those feet, but the referee quite happy because the ball comes back quickly. As it does again, Phillips, O'Connell once more. What a workhorse. But the ball is out, and it's on the Waratah side. Half penny controls it well and from no angle there how far did he get down the touchline the answer is quite a long way outstanding footballers on the Waratahs side Drew Mitchell they must have well we know they've got extreme firepower at their disposal in the Wallaby squad if Mitchell can't even get in the main squad and as for Bernard Foley uh, we saw earlier the way he goes he's so aggressive to the line he brings in Drew Mitchell so well and he's just as Stuart's talking about in commentary he's drawn the blitz a couple of times Foley he said to Davis come on lead that blitz and I will beat you with the pass outstanding footballing at the moment when they do get the ball it's fascinating because the Lions have been blitzing throughout the tour I wonder if they're gonna come up with some difference in terms of their system and as I said Quade Cooper found space on the wide flanks and Bernard Foley is doing just the same just the same Tom Young's is all right he's back on his feet of course the management have to consider too how long they leave certain players out there today they want to seal the win Stated aim of going through the tour unbeaten. Manager Andy Irving made that point a long, long time ago on home soil. Sam Warburton backed him. He said there's no point coming on these tours unless you shoot for the best possible result. Of course, the results that really matter and the ones that will be remembered the Test Series. But the Lions trying to get into that series in the best possible shape. And Tom Croft nearly across Ollie Atkins there. Croft, a big presence, either on attacking ball or defensive ball at the line-out. Alan Wynne Jones, what is he on at the moment? Well, he's on the wrong side, is the call from the referee. But you know what I mean with the effort that he's putting in. Yes, Tom Young's actually is the bloke who's been pinged there. Alan Wynne Jones was doing nothing wrong. He has had a tremendous start to this game. It's been a very good game in itself, and... Uh, McKibben, who is supplying the ammunition to Bernard Foley. One touchline effort, he's kicked it. Here's Tom Young's about to give the penalty away on Foley. 
Just topples on the wrong side, off his feet there. That's another area that is going to be so significant. We keep talking about scrums, but there's a cultural difference between the North and Southern Hemisphere in the way referees officiate at the breakdown. And we have two Southern Hemisphere refs in the first two tests. It's an area where the Lions will be looking closely at A, the interpretation, and B, how their players are dealing with referees. Brendan McGibbon, actually born in Irvine, Scotland. As is Mrs. Harrison, anniversary tomorrow. There's McGibbon's kick, and it's a good one. We've seen some high quality goal kicking on this tour, haven't we? From yeah. both teams, home and away. They have fantastic quality of goal kicking. We've talked scrum, we've talked breakdown in commentary. The penalties that come from there lead to penalty kicks at goal. Will it all boil down to goal kicking? I hope not, but tight series so often do. McKibben again. To f well, in fact, McKibben had moved to fly half. That often happens. They're interchangeable, those two. Not just with the goal kicking. Certainly given the Waratahs uh, a much more solid base to have those two at half back. Ben Vola Vola would have played at 10 had the uh, sevens release not happened. But he doesn't really have the experience that Foley has. And Mitchell puts down for the dropout. And not just experience, is it? It's, it's that variety and range that Foley does bring to his game. I've been very impressed with him throughout the Super season. Now, he looked a very bright young player, talked to a lot of people, people like Tim Horan, and he's on the radar. Some very good young fly halves there. The guy we're going to see Tuesday, Tamua at Brumbies, he's class act too. Zebo looking at class act. Got his six caps for Ireland, scored two tries. It's that injury against England cutting short his Six Nations, which started so promisingly in Cardiff, so skillfully, Jonathan Davies. On his feet, first arrival. He's been swapping between 12 and 13 on this tour. Breakdown victory for the Waratahs again. Certainly not gone all the Lions' way at the breakdown, has it? Here's Mitchell, looks for the handoff, and in doing so, had time to put Crawford away here. This is big Cam Crawford, and Lee Halfpenny steps in, and Jamie Roberts helps out to make a very good combination tackle, but now they're out of it. And the Lions need all the defenders they can muster here. As Atkins goes into Funapola, McKibben and Foley once more, and then Holloway. McKibben to Foley, looking to show that range. Beat them off the wing, caught by Jonathan Davies. McKibben floats it out, and there are blue shirts here. Mitchell looks for them, one of them is Crawford who, like Beetham, is a very threatening presence on the wing. That is Paddy Ryan. In goes McKibben again. Foley, Holloway, trying to use his bulk. Off the floor to McKibben and Atkins. It's a draining passage of play for both sets of players, but it's the Lions who'll be feeling it, as they're the defenders. Mitchell to Dennis. The Waratahs trying to nick the lead before half-time. But they won't on this occasion. Fine defence there from the Lions. But absolutely brilliant attacking play from the Waratahs. Foley is orchestrating the show, but Drew Mitchell is giving a fantastic finale. The move started again with a big miss pass from the fly half and a lovely one-handed offload from Drew Mitchell causing all sorts of problems and look at this Carter brilliant stuff at 12 Mitchell the one-handed offload to Crawford you know this is a team with probably nine of its first team missing they were hammered for the first five minutes of this match and they have bounced back absolutely brilliant it's a, it's a thrilling first half and immense credit must go to the Waratahs 
Michael Checker played for Randwick he goes to the All Blacks way back in uh, 1988 All Blacks won it but Checker said that everyone at Randwick has never forgotten that game and he wanted his players to savor every minute of this opportunity to play the great Lions touring team section over the top and it's meant for Zebo and the bounce actually goes for Jonathan Davies who re responded really well and Zebo too and it's not gone forward the Lions they're the ones going forward here two props fly in there and win a penalty Sexton, half penny, picked up by Maitland. Maitland tries to go on the outside. Inside to Tom Youngs. Just a question now how much advantage the referee wants to play, but this is a new advantage. Paul O'Connell to Mako Vunapola, tackled by try scorer Carter. It's one try apiece. Sexton for the Lions, Carter for the Waratahs. Oh, Inko Skelton. This is O'Connell. Pushing two men off. It's a brawl at the breakdown. And sometimes out wide as well. And Zebo has left his wide position on more than one occasion in this first half. And looked really good. Getting involved. O'Connell again. Wynn Jones. Alan Wynn Jones. Nobody has carried more than those two. Adam Jones leaves it, Jamie Heaslip, this power, power all the way from the Lions. And now it's wide from O'Connell to Sexton to Davies to Halfpenny. What a finish to the first half from the Taurus. They don't want to reveal too much before the test, but they are showing what they can do tonight. They really are. Paul O'Connell's handling is fascinating. It's never been a great strength of his, but he didn't take the contact. He took that ball and he moved it through the hands. This is the moment the try is on Sexton. We know how he passes and then it's easy for half penny. Crown and score for the Lions to what has been a fabulous first half. Sometimes we look ahead and we know it's the first test in Brisbane coming up, but we sometimes forget about what is happening in the immediate present. We're so busy thinking about the first test, but let's not forget what a wonderful game of rugby this has been for 40 minutes. The Lions started brilliantly, they finished brilliantly, and the Waratahs, what a part they've played. And that's the point, isn't it? The way you get ready for the first test is to do it step by step and to treat the opposition with the respect that they have clearly deserved. And the other thing, it is everything that a Lions tour is meant to be about. Like the first half in Brisbane last Saturday, the first half here, it's a real tourist match. The crowd are thrilled. So where's your money? Half penny kicking. Go on, finish it well. It's been a cracking half, and Lee half penny does finish it well, right on the hooter. The Lions nearly scored in the first minute, but they have two tries to their name to the Waratahs one, and that has been an absolutely fantastic first half of Lions touring rugby. 23. 10 the Lions lead and half penny a try scorer again and a kicker par excellence again the Lions came out bursting out eager to impress Sexton got the first and then the Waratahs hit back but the Lions had the last say Plenty more international rugby still to come today for you on Sky Sports. Uh, the Quad Series continues in Nelspruit in South Africa. Samoa Italy up for you once we're done here in Sydney. That's at 10 past one on 2HD. Channel change at four as the box take on the Scots. You'll find that on Sky Sports 3HD. It has been a really entertaining first half, a cracking game of rugby and the test that the Lions wanted a week out from the first game against the Wallabies. Key messages being laid down in the changing rooms with 40 minutes gone, and that is the scoreboard. 23-10, the tourists lead. They started brilliantly. Zebo almost. Sexton confirmed with a try in the corner. Halfpenny rounded off the first 40 nicely as well. But the Waratahs have been extremely spirited, and once again have just exposed one or two areas the Lions will want to concentrate on with that first test against Australia. Fast looming, but as we said, first things first, 
What a game of rugby. A tremendous game from both sides. I think the Lions, uh, it's the most impressive display we've seen so far with some remarkable performances by a lot of the tall timber like Tom Croft, Alan Wynne Jones, Paul O'Connell. They've done an awful lot. But it's had some of that interplay by Jonathan Davis, uh, Johnny Sexton. You know, I think the Lions deserve to be even further ahead, but Wirt has great finishing as well. Great start. Oh, super. You boys instance. have brought the intensity. You yeah. arrive, but it ratchets up a couple of levels. Out the corner, out the block, Sexton flat. Great decoy by Davis. They're terrified of him. Davis round the corner, Zebo, go on, get in there, you'll get a test shirt. I mean, these things, fine margin, and then a few seconds later, they counter again, Scotty, brilliant finishing. They did, and they put wits on the game, this is exactly what we wanted. Zebo this time, he's the creator, John Davis, just a stop show, and then he's in, and wonderful. Johnny Sexton, you've got to follow those round, and he just wanted to make it more difficult for half and he's sticking in the corner just to prove he can do it. But yeah. they started with high tempo, they started with intent, and they'd want to come out, they want to play. both they sides of the ball, defensively strong as well, Wally. And that's, yeah. that's what Sexton does so well. Well, he's always there in support, a running threat at 10, and he's always received on the shoulder, great finish. Superb response from the Waratahs, yeah. but once again, Lions just vulnerable when the tempo and the, and the, the rev counter yes. goes up. Those outside channels have been uh, just exposed a couple of times on this tour so far. Lovely kick by Foley, he is a class player, has been all super rugby season. Great step, Sean Maitland hugely disappointed, and a nice finish, but they've threatened that, and where Andy Farrell will be talking in the change room is just when to blitz, when to back off. And it's very difficult, because Johnny Sexton was actually down having, having treatment, so they did exploit that very, very well, but it just shows the pace and the intent that they have. Yeah. They've steadied the ship, though, the Lions. It was getting yeah. a bit exciting, but Lee Halfpenny right on the stroke at half-time. Great yep. patient, great phase play from the Lions. Yeah, now alone can he plays kick like he does. He can always finish tries. Alwyn Jones from Edom makes this here. Look at that leg drive, and that's what you need. We need a big ball-carrying second row. Jamie Heaslip takes it in again. Sam Walton did got through a lot of graft there, and there's quick hands by O'Connell. Ten, and they just have the numbers. Jonathan Davis does so well to hold up the defender and just puts in a half penny. But all just good work up front by the forwards getting the platform, getting the momentum, uh, and a great finishing. As a big performance is out there, we ask players to stand up before. I think Alloway Jones be superb, O'Connell brilliant, Troff has been very, very good. I, what, the one thing I'd like to see is a little bit quicker ball from the breakdown. Right. A couple of times we've been turned over, I think it's four times in that half. Mike Phyllis has been caught around those areas. We need to sort that out in the second so half. So a word on Warburton overall, therefore, because those are the areas that he's, he's looking after. Well, I thought he's played very well. You know, he hasn't carried uh, an awful lot or, uh, at all, but what he has done is got over the ball. He's made tackle after tackle, and he's getting there. He's getting into the contact but one thing I do like is when the contact is lost he then comes out as well but this is exactly what we want from him getting in there feeling good about what he does and doing it well yeah he okay. doesn't have the glamour role but you need one player in the back row to do all this hard graft and you got to look hard and follow him to see just exactly what he does he's got a, a, a great work rate you look at this he just uh, does manage to win it but he's right back slows it down for Super. a second or two and that second or two bought the defensive line just enough time to hold Super. it really, yeah. really impressed by him I just feel for his own confidence mm. he'd probably just like a turnover yeah. yeah just get me down on the on the sheet for one yeah. turnover and just everyone will go right Sam is our captain so key things you want to see in the second half from the Lions but key things for me is, is the contact area I'd like to see the ball a little bit quicker Mike Phillips at the moment is having to go in and, and dig around so we're not seeing the big runs from him we're not seeing uh, him getting into the game uh, in that way the scrum struggled a, a touch yeah. especially on their ball and the one thing when we got a five meter scrum we've got to finish that yeah. off it just cannot pop out the back little things to work on playing very very well but we're looking seven days from a test we just need an up it a notch good stuff guys thank you very much Lee. great tempo on the pitch great tempo in here at half time as well you do feel the tour has gone up a gear here in sydney this evening lions leading by 13 results certainly not confirmed a bit of work to do with that yet but in terms of the bigger picture still plenty for the Lions to concentrate on not revealing too much of their hand but certainly shuffling their cards ahead of the first test this time next Saturday 23-10 the Lions in front watch every Lions pass kick tackle and try live on Sky Sports this summer on the sofa, on the move, or in the office, you will not miss a minute with Sky Sports. Every match is live in high definition, online and on SkyGo. Stay up to date with all the breaking stories on Sky Sports News at skysports.com and on your phone or tablet via the Sky Sports app.
the Lions on Sky Sports. We have got it covered. And you may well need some of those tools on Tuesday for the game against the Brumbies, but look at Warren Gatland, animated in the extreme. He knows that plenty more still to come from his side as they build towards the first test against Australia. That, of course, next Saturday. But as we were saying, the Lions move on to the Australian capital for the game against the Brumbies at Canberra Stadium on Tuesday evening. That's on 10 o'clock, Sky Sports 1 HD. If you are in the office, remember to take your Sky Go. Half-time, though, here at the Sydney Football Stadium as the Tars emerge. Plenty of firepower for the home side to turn this one around. They are the top try scorers in Super Rugby this season, but at the moment they find themselves 23-10 down. Two tries for the Lions from the outside half, Johnny Sexton, and fullback Lee Halfpenny. And at the moment, things going the tourist way. We'll hand you back once again to Stuart Barnes and Miles Harrison. Thanks, Alex. No changes made by... The Lions at half-time, uh, just seen uh, the Waratahs run out of that tunnel. I didn't see any different numbers on their backs either. So everybody out there ready to try and give us more of what we had in the first half and certainly every chance of this game being remembered for all the right reasons, unlike the match between these two infamous match 12 years ago. And Duncan McRae was sent off for his assault on Ronan O'Gara four yellow cards as well at one time in the match oh that's good running from uh, Foley kind of running he shows in the sevens jersey but he's also shown it on plenty of occasions for the Waratahs at 10 this season and he had a very good first half and there he is once more finding Ollie Atkins McGibbon to Skelton Keep an eye on him over the years. Drew Mitchell, he's probably done for his international days. This is his final home game on this ground. Of course, there's one more Super Rugby game to play against the Reds, but that will be at the Olympic Stadium in Homebush. And of course, the Lions will play their third test. That is a judge to be a block, and the Lions will have the first penalty of this second half. Alex saying, if you go into the office during the Brumbies game, come on, folks, surely you can find an excuse to be in front of your screen for an hour and a half. And if you're a boss listening, let your men away. Skelton with a little sidestep. Lions, I'm just wondering how long before we see a few changes. Gatland is going to need to see people like Corbusiero play. He's going to need to see men like Parling, maybe Rob Carney. He's got to come on as well, and, you know, looking ahead to that first test, Hibbard, he's got to prove himself. Corbusiero, he needs time to prove that his scrummaging can make the difference. Parling take on really well, and most intriguing of all, Rob Carney. He's been given a real stay of grace in Australia because they know how good he is, and they want Rob Carney to repay them. They say he's very fit and sharp in the gap at the line out the referee Ron Gatlin confirmed when I was talking to him again before kickoff that Rob Carney would not have made it had he been scanned at home before the team left such was the nature of the injury here's his captain Sam Warburton very interesting montage of Sam Warburton's first half that we saw at half time Maka Vunapola could have put a good DVD together of that first 40 minutes. As you say, Alex Corbusiero's time is running out because Vunapola is putting down marker after marker on this tour. And in the loose, there were one or two scrums that worried me, though. Corbusiero, we'll have to see him at some moment. His Sexton to Roberts, good offload, Jonathan David, oh, to Halfpenny! The piece is really coming together now. You could argue that's the best of the lot. Well, that's sublime. We talked about how Sexton and Robert, with O'Driscoll fully fit, could be irresistible. Sexton laid on the gain line, let the defence get up there, the little show, the power of Robert, Davis and Halfpenny. That is a gorgeous try, arguably, arguably 
That's as good a try as the Lions have scored on this tour. Soft little hands from Jonathan Davis. Sexton and Roberts got behind the gain line, and then the two Welshmen finished it off. Late there, McCutcheon can't do anything. Swede off line, beautiful play by the Welsh centres. And Lee Halfpenny, it's not the fact that he's finished it, it's how quickly he has picked his line and gone there. And once again, the Lions start the half at pace on their terms. Wasn't the case against the Reds. It is now a week on. And it's another 100% night for Halfpenny. He scored two tries as well, so he is up to 23 points. Just his own personal tally, 23 to turn into 25. Yes, it does. And the Lions, 28, turns into 30. Will Greenwood. Talking to the backroom staff, what was said in the change room at half time, more of the same intensity and discipline. Exactly how they started the first half. First half didn't quite get the seven pointer, they did there. They are following orders to the letter. And that was not Will Greenwood, that was uh, a picture of Bill the cuddly toy. Otherwise, Will would have had a very rough tour. <laughs> Penalty to the Waratahs, that's a good reply from them. Very good from the Waratahs, extremely disappointed from the Lions. Classic case there, just scored a beauty of a seven-pointer. Switched off, 20 points ahead. They will not want to be doing this in Brisbane, seven days' time now. Line has been pretty good on their own throw. Youngs and Croft have gone well. Let's see them defend a line out. Lungia throws to Skelton at the front. Round comes Paddy Wright in that one cap against France. The end of 2012, and there's Skelton, off to Carter again! Have they found the perfect reply once more? Kick for a loss forward. It's a bit of a scuffle on the floor, the uh, player's Leave not it. happy at all. Not sure from a Lions point of view who's buried underneath all of that is Johnny Sexton. Maybe the last person they want to be on the floor with the whole of the Waratahs on top of him. <laughs> I think Sir Carter gets that down. He is determined. Check for a loss forward. GMO. Check for a loss forward. It's Skelton. Does he rip it out, regain it, and then get the pass? Initially, I thought Skelton had ripped it clear. There's nothing wrong with the grounding by Tom Carter. He hits the line. That's no problem. The crowd are going mad, but that is not going to be the key issue. This is. In fact, it, we have to go back a little bit further. There's nothing wrong with the offload. You're hearing the voice of Keith Brown, also the television match official. Glenn Jackson said he was always happy with no. the grounding. Here it is. No, he, 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 he's pulled it out and he's caught that ball back. Skelton, who's had a, a fine start to this half, I think that's a cracking offload, rips the ball. I think it's all done with his left hand. The rip, the offload, great awareness from the youngster and great determination and a low body position from Tom Carter. He's approaching 100 games now for the Waratahs. Tom Carter yeah, talking about the decision. possibility of retiring. There is no clear and obvious knock-on, and the grounding was fine. You can award the try. Thank you. And if this is to be his last season, and that is not confirmed yet, it would be an amazing way to go out with two tries against the British and Irish Lions. How about this kid, Skelton? The first five minutes of this half, he's been tearing into the Lions. We've seen him sidestep. His soft hands and offload him really good. That was a one-handed rip against the Lions, and instead of being greedy and going for it, he popped the ball to that man, Tom Carter, and the Waratahs, they are in no mood to lie down whatsoever. And there looks like there's a lot of rugby left in him. His brother, Ed, had his career ended early because of injury, and Tom Carter very aware of that. Certainly performing at a high level tonight. McKibben's conversion and the great kicking just 
goes on and on from both teams. Spoke to Rod Caper before the game, talking about young Carter, just to, says heart and soul of the Waratahs. Been around for years, superstars everywhere, just keeps trucking it up and doing it for the Waratahs. Week in, week out, and he's just jogging off the field now to a standing ovation from the Waratahs faithful. And Tom Kingston has come on. Kingston would have played had Rob Horn not returned from the Wallabies. Kingston's the fastest player in the Waratahs squad. There's a board on the ground which shows who's quickest and in fact who's quickest over the years and Kingston has the quickest time of any Waratah to have played. Ooh, slip from Roberts. Cam Crawford. Seven tries for Crawford in his last eight Super Rugby games this season. He's been a bit of a try machine, hasn't quite gone to him tonight. Not to say it won't. Here's Mitchell. The ball certainly followed him in the first half in those early moments. And there's that lovely kicking that we saw time and time again in training. A lot to smile about Tom Carter. By far the more influential of the two centres, Rob Horn released from the Aussie squad, but Carter was the man. I think now Horn is likely to move to 12 and the pace of Kingston wide, I would think. Now, line, interesting line-up, very good in the first half, but they didn't go long at all. They went very much middle short Croft. Taken by Alan Wynne-Jones. Richie Gray with this injury at the moment, a bit of a knock. He's in Evans, Jeff Parling, the other two. Locks not playing today, alongside Gray. And a penalty for the Lions pack. Saw a lot of line-outs to the tail in the early part of this tour. I don't think we've seen one today. Just said, Croft at the front, Alan Wynne-Jones, O'Connell. A lot more driving, Sexton. Tilts his hand on his face, but he's bounced back and he finds a solid touch. What the Lions showed last week against the Reds was that ability to rein it back in, get it all tight again, having just conceded. Yeah, but we have to remember, both with the Reds and with the Waratahs, both these regions have more than half their first team missing. Robbie Deans will be taking plenty out of it, as much as the Lions will. Sexton off, job done, done very well. Farrell now, get flatter, get closer to the gain line, bring your centres into it. And also a change made by the Waratahs, and there he is, making a tackle, Lepetti uh, Timani. A couple of famous brothers. Back of Vunipola, he's got a famous brother, hasn't he? Scored a try for England last week on his test debut when he came on. Here's Phillips. And Croft. Phillips and Farrell to Roberts. So Sexton off unscathed, though he came close on a couple of occasions. Phillips again. That's Jamie Heaslip. Alan Wynn Jones driven and driving. The advantage was being played for an offside, so Farrell will look to continue, but Halfpenny is still out there. Alan Wynne jones he said he continues to drive, he's driving his way into this test team, I think, at the moment. Him and Paul O'Connell looking a very good partnership. His line-out's been pretty slick, but his ball-carrying excellent, played a major role in the try that Halfpenny scored just before half-time. He's now driven Lions towards three points, having a big game, I think. Farrell fancied it, didn't he? <laughs> Even though he must have known it was half pennies. But that's good. Everybody wants a slice of the cake, and he's had a pretty big slice tonight, hasn't he, Alan Wynne-Jones? He stepped up on anything we've seen so far. He needed to, because Parling's been pretty shut. Parling on the bench now, he's possibly playing for bench. But this man, Halfpenny, 
he continues to be absolutely immaculate. How many points if he gets this three miles? Well, he'll be up to 28, and it will be a new record for a Lions player in Australia, overtaking Ronan O'Gara's record against Western Australia. Of course, O'Gara had a very different sort of game on this ground 12 years ago. Fascinating defensive setup from the Waratahs at lineouts now. Not seen it before. The fly half Foley is defending in the five metre channel to allow back row forward to go and stand in the 10 channel and wait for big Jamie Roberts. That's how they're trying to counter the Roberts threat. Phillips, a little show, and he lost his opposite number, McGibbon. What Warren Gatlin was saying this week impressive or so impressive about the Waratahs this season. Their breakdown work, well, I've seen that again. Real challenge for the Lions there, and that ability to draw and pass. We've seen that again too, but we've also seen that from the Lions. Most significantly with their latest try. There's Drew Mitchell. Through goes Warburton, it was out. And it was a fine gain at the breakdown from the captain, Vunapola. Phillips and Farrell, his new halfback partner, is a long way back. So kicks deep to find Tom Kingston. Very, very interesting what Will was saying then about that line out system. You know, on Thursday I was having a chat with Michael Checker and he said. Robbie Deans has a system to defend against the power of the Lions. He wouldn't say understandably what it was. We're just going back for foul play. It's, there it is. Hooker's just taken out uh, Zebo. Hack there. That's a penalty. Going back to that, Checker said, I'm not going to say what it is, but with Will just talking there, is James Connor going to be in the five metre channel? And Michael Hooper blocking it. I wonder whether we've just picked out the Australian defensive system. I've, I've actually just, I've just given you a heads up at the previous uh, rock there that you're changing lines into front of players. It's the same thing. It's a penalty. Stop it. But he's offside. Sir. So Glenn Jackson have picked it up, and we're wondering if you picked something up from Michael Checker's game plan there that has bigger ramifications. Just. May have just caught a glance there of Michael Checker's assistant, Alan Gaffney. Very familiar to, of course, the Ireland national team, but also Munster and indeed Leinster and Saracens in England. There he is. It's all mysteries approaching this first test, but I think Will spot a Foley in that flanker. Might just have given us the first clue. That will be the Aussies' line-out defence. Well, O'Connell got hands on it, but it was well picked up by the uh, energetic Vunapoli. He's disgusted with his dropping of the ball, though. And there's Rob Horn. Two tries against Wales in the series this time last year. Oh, interception for Jonathan Davies. Farrell, Maitland, now who's got the pace? Halfpenny certainly has, Tom Croft too, Tom Croft goes for the handle, oh it's a Tom Croft special! Almost breaking out into a smile, he won't like that little shove, he'll want to go back and have a word, so the smile's gone, but the try stands. Tom Croft really can put the foot down. Like a if bat. He's clearly and obviously offside. I understand our check. Well, we're, we're just checking. Well, Davis looked like an Olympic sprinter who got to that interception so quickly. Croft, he too looked like a sprinter of some calibre. Saw it for his club towards the end of the season, an incredible athlete. When you said who has the pace, you just wanted to say Croft does. Now, Jonathan Davis, head guard, is he offside? He's not. McKibben's gone very flat. And that's the danger of taking it flat. Bit of a gamble. He's onside. He doesn't even have to be a sprinter to get there. Just one or two paces from McKibben. Technically, he's just played him right into the Yucky, game. There is no clear and obvious offside. You can award the try. Thank you.
Smile might come back now for Tom Croft. Well, that was one of those eye-catching moments that will serve him well when it comes to that long night of selection. And certainly, the back row is going to take the selectors through until the early hours. And Croft, good handoff there. It's Kingston, isn't it? The new lad just on. He might be quick, but he doesn't have the power against Croft there. Quickest Waratah ever, according to the board. Well, Tom Croft showed him a clean pair of heels. Did put his face in the dirt first, though. So. <laughs> Did help. And Halfpenny takes the Lions up to 40 points. What was it, 12 years ago? 41-24. They'll be very satisfied with the way this is going. The test that they're getting and the quality that they are giving back. Yeah, Waratahs really have risen to the occasion and the Lions are playing some tremendous stuff with the ball. Croft. Is Tom Croft playing his way into test team? AJ Gilbert is on for Pat McCutcheon. His knee gets a rest now, just back from injury. AJ Gilbert made his debut for the Waratahs last weekend in their victory against the Force. Dave Dennis played all 15, was involved in all 15 Australian tests last year. His release here today seems to hint that he won't be involved in the first test of 2013. Side so got a penalty. McKibben, unless of course Dennis does anything to change that perception or has done his work. Rob Carney's tour may be about to start. He's headed down to the dead ball area. Looks as though he's getting ready. Might be the 60-minute mark, but more options for Gatlin in terms of test selection. If Carney can come on and pick up his form from the back end of the season. Half penny could shift to the wing. Slight problem for the Lions, slight worry. They are conceding one or two penalties for not rolling away. Again, something Robbie Deans will be looking at. Lungi throws to Skelton. There's AJ Gilbert. A couple of games for the Reds a few years ago. That's Foley and Kingston. Good pick up from Mitchell. We don't expect anything less. And there's Crawford. He ha doesn't have the ball. Referee takes them back for the penalty. And taken out in the air. Wide channel again, Miles. Wide channel. Waratahs are causing problems there. I must say, again, this big lump skeleton in his offloading game is superb. And Drew Mitchell, what a talent. McKibben, now he's drilling it to the corner. Waratahs might be 23 points down, but they are not going gently into this Sydney night. Really good stuff. Some fidgeting on the Lions bench. Here's Croft. Phillips. And the Lions are about to make a mass substitution. Here's Beetham. Oh! That was Helen Wynne Jones. Lungia, what a hit. <laughs> Thought you'd stood on your toe for a minute. Here's he slip. <laughs> Paul O'Connell. Warburton. Alan Wynne Jones to Roberts. Jonathan Davies. Half penny's got Zebo outside. Had a quieter second half. Had a very busy first half. <whistles> Penalty again at the breakdown. It's not all been perfect from the Lions. No, it's not yours, Mike Phillips. Nice try. Just wondering now whether Mike Phillips and a few others should be coming off. Blokes we think are in the test team. Paul O'Connell possibly for Jeff Parlin. There's no point now taking the big risks. Well, they're all stripped off, Stuart. I think one, two, three, four, five, six players down there about to come on 
for the Lions now. Oh, McKibben, that's a bad fight to pick. Adam Jones, he's going to be in the test team. Dan Cole, he's going to be coming on in the test. 60 minutes is like for like. It's seven players coming on. Hibbard, Corbusiero, Cole, Parling, Lydia, Youngs, Carney, all on. And the players coming off. Adam Jones has gone off. Of course, Tom Youngs has gone. Chaja Uka, Mako, Bernapola, a whole new front row. Lee Halfpenny, Paul O'Connell, Mike Phillips, and Tom Croft. And how many of those will be named in the first test? Intriguing. Here comes Crawford! That was a good line from Crawford. Interesting line out. Foley. Release! McKibben. Olungia. They haven't really got him carrying as much as they would have wanted to, the hooker. Horn. Oh, good work from Horn. In goes Jamie Heaslip. Not one of those taken off, but it doesn't mean to say he's out of contention, anything but. Skelton knocks on. And the Lions' defence holds out again. I think it does tell you that Paul O'Connell is an absolute cert now, and Alan Wynne-Jones now probably partnering the bloke who he's fighting with to play the other place alongside him. Hibbert, 20 minutes to see. If he could just dynamite himself back into contention, Tom Youngs has gone well. It's a great effort from Paul O'Connell, you know. Some lovely passing, he's hit some ruts, he's made some tackles. As I said in the first half, a lot of tackles, a lot of good attacking play from the Tars. being applied strapping but everyone looks pretty happy down there so they should give the scoreline 40 points to 17 now Sam Warburton wanting even more of a ruthless attitude in the final quarter to really push on from here but it's up to the new boys the fresh legs Mike Phillips stops so fresh in the leg department but I think he's okay but it would be something of a miracle if those blokes had gone off the pitch after an hour of this game and didn't have some sorts of bumps and bruises. I was just bringing it out earlier, it's not about injuries there, it's about just getting them ready to rehab as fast as possible and get training. They've got a big game in seven days. Ben Young's to put in. Got the only try against the Queensland Reds. Much more pro prolific in that department tonight, the Lions. They have been in other games on this tour. Farrell going downfield. The big Gary Owen. Mitchell nearly didn't make the catch in the end. He's caught by Rob Carney. And it's back with Jonathan Davies and on to Maitland. Maitland! Maitland trying to get away! Ball inside and a hand in was an important one, but Jonathan Davies stays there again. And supports again. Ben Youngs to Hibbard, Farrell, now this could be like a pass if it goes straight to Zebo. it's standing up for Horn, who uses all of his height. Well, it's an offside against Waratahs, but that's a cruel break for Simon Zebo. Rob Horn did very well. Skelton offside. Very nice offload off the ground from captain Sam Warburton, who is probably having to go the 80 to show his teammates, hey, part of the crew. But it's not just about are they the test players going off, is this the bench coming on to a certain extent? And always it's like, who's going to be in the first 15? This test series isn't won by 15 blokes, it's won by a lot more, and it's preparing benches as well as the starting 15. First test, 10.30 a.m. our programme starts your time next weekend in the Suncorp Stadium in Brisbane. Well, that is some impact made by the Lions replacement front row and the other forwards involved as well, Parling and Lydiot in behind. I just think number 17 on the loose head, Alex Corbusiero, he's still in with a chance of, of starting... Mako Vunipola's done brilliantly in the loose. 
but he came here as an impact sub. Fully fit, Corbis Sierra has always been ahead of him in the England pecking order. He destroyed Mike Ross a few years ago, England Island. He caused the All Blacks problems. He's had enough time to get himself established. He could be the bowler from Argentina. Penalty. Encouraged into the collapse. The Waratahs. Not sure what three points does for the Lions here. They want another scrum. Right, they're choosing a scrum. Let's go. Lee Harpen is off the field. We know he wouldn't have missed. Oh, and Farrell wouldn't have missed either. But there's a more pressing psychological, physical point at this stage of the game for these fresh Lions forwards to make for their squad. And for themselves, and for themselves. Yeah. Hibbert, Cole, Corbusiero, stakes really high. Graham Roundtree will be enjoying all of this. Inside Andy Farrell. He's smiling, he's laughing. Pleasure to see. Touch. Sick. Same again. Well, next weekend, you imagine it's going to be Ben Robinson, normally a Waratah, Ben Alexander on the other side, and Stephen Moore of Bromby between them. But at this stage, Australia will be bringing on subs, people like Kepu, another Waratah out. And will the Lions have the scrum at 65 to drive through and demolish Australia? It's part of the strategic game now that we're seeing tonight. Working out the plan, working out the strength of this scrum. Touch! Sit! Well, that's not so enjoyable from a Lions point of view. Corbusiero pinged for Hingin. What does Paul Wallace make of that, I wonder? We'll talk to him later and find out. Let's do it now. Wally very... Wally very briefly, Corbusiero, has he got a chance? Yeah, well, I think from a scrummaging point of view, uh, for Napola, he's struggling some scrums, but they had that one dominant one, which maybe Jamie Heaslip should have held the ball in a bit better. I, I think he's definitely going to maybe be an impact player coming on, and it's going to be about two different front rows and a second front row coming on. Good run from Jamie Heaslip. It was Jeff Parling still at the line-out, and the Lions are on the attack again with Farrell and Jamie Roberts. Youngs, Alan Wynne-Jones to Richard Hibbard. Parling to Farrell, and then Jonathan Davies. On his feet. Leave it now. He was on his feet. Youngs. Jeff Parling, his club colleague at Leicester. Heaslip. Another fine run, wasn't it, from Jamie Heaslip. There's Richard Hibbard. Jamie Roberts is receiving some treatment now. Meanwhile, the Lions continue attacking. Youngs to Farrell. Davies, that's a nice little pop pass to Rob Carney. And Jamie Roberts is wincing away there, isn't he? All those substitutions, but you can't take everybody off. You've still got to finish the game. And he's limping off the field, is Jamie Roberts. This is Youngs. Farrell. Davies. Maitland. Plenty of cover there for the Waratahs. Down goes Cam Crawford. AJ Gilbert to Mitchell. Classy work again from Drew Mitchell. Oh, very good. Well, Roberts is off and he's having his hamstring stretched. And I think he's one of the most important secret weapons we haven't seen a lot of. But, you know, on the evidence of tonight, 
Jonathan Davis doesn't have the roaring power of Roberts, but he's played beautifully on this tour. And if he has to play alongside that man, Brian O'Driscoll, then I don't think the Lions would be too worried. Manu Tuolangi, we haven't seen him for a while, but right now, you know, I just think Davis and O'Driscoll would go very well together if Roberts is a problem. That's a long way from that. Corbusiero. Youngs. Hibbard and Heaslip combining. Davis from Farrell's pass and now Carney. Difficult for the replacements to continue the previous momentum, but they're giving it a go here. Hibbard wants that ball, takes it away from fellow Osprey Alan Wynne Jones. Ben Youngs to Farrell. Corbusiero. Having to be patient here. So Farrell goes high again. Trying to get there to put pressure on Mitchell. Has to let him land and does. But Mitchell has done most things right tonight. And now it's Zebo having to go back. Good catch. News on Jamie Roberts is that he's managed to leave the ground. He's walking now with the, uh, the floor, as it were. Looks a bit better. Here's Beetham. Good tackle from Jonathan Davis, who's covered so much ground tonight. Again. Been very good, hasn't he? Very good. Tremendous support work. He's a very intelligent player. Classic Clinetli type of back. Just has a great rugby knowledge, doesn't he? And he tracks the ball so well. For the space around the ball. Ben Youngs goes himself here. Looks for support and Lydia was on the inside, just doesn't quite go to him. Final ten minutes then. Youngs again, Jonathan Davis, oh, he's away. He gets another try on this tour and hasn't he deserved it. Satisfying for him, satisfying night for the Lions. And what is turning into the most satisfying night of the tour. I think that was a moment for Will, Sk Will Skelton to be deliberately offside and take a yellow card for his team. Pulled away from Ben Youngs' pass, with, James, with uh, Davis having an easy sprint in. Ben Youngs, this is what he'll be doing off the bench, threatening around the fringes, and then he shoots the open side. Will Skelton, come on, mate, don't put your hands up, go for it. All too easy for Jonathan Davis, who has been... Almost like the glue in this midfield back line for the Lions. Does all the little things well, does some of the big things pretty well too. And there goes Jamie Roberts. A lonely trudge up a tunnel. Uh, fingers crossed, all Lions fans, whatever nationality, will be hoping that that is merely a precaution and that we will see him next week he is starting to have a big impact on this tour he is a test match player and no one wants his tour to end like that i feel sick for the lad right now i did the same walk 12 years ago farrell's conversion There's no changes that be it half penny or farrell and roberts right in the spotlight oh that is not a good look but the medics will know more well it's a great shot isn't it by our cameraman but it's not one we wanted to see mitchell did that go 10 no it didn't five tries for the lions over 40,000 in the stadium to see it. Moritars. They often sell out here. Let's go back eight years or so for that to be the case. They're making changes now in their front row. Luke Holmes is on. And Sam Talakai and also Matt Lucas is out there, as you can see. Another player back from the sevens and younger brother of Ben, who 
was fullback for the Reds last week. Two very nippy scrum halves on now. Also, Ben Volavola gets his taste of Lions rugby in a Waratah shirt. No. So too Richard Arho, Stuart. Vola Vola, let's get this right. He was on a rugby union X Factor competition and he won it and got himself a year's contract with the Waratahs. Tell me I wasn't dreaming when I was told that at training Wednesday. Tell me I wasn't dreaming. Well, they put out the message that there was a contract up for grabs and they wanted local club players to apply and he was the one that impressed most in that particular week. It's just the phrase X Factor that freaked me. Farrell. Yeah, I'm not sure Simon Cow played any role in the selection process on that one. <laughs> Crawford tries to keep it in and can't. Done all right, Farrell as well, you know. A very difficult start to this tour, but he's looking a little bit more confident. He's playing a bit flatter. And it must help that his goal kicking is just flawless at the moment. And if you know, Sexton would be a massive blow, as big as Jamie Roberts. But Farrell is just playing with confidence and goal kicking skill. Well, not quite for Warburton. First line out that the Lions have lost on their own throw. Not sure how much damage it's going to cause. They might go the other way if Maitley can keep it in. But he can't. Might cause damage for Richard Hibbard. I haven't said that, you know. I think it's probably the first time the Lions have gone really long for it as well. Hibbard has had problems today. Normally he's pretty solid as we look at Rob Horn. But Youngs, he did well, but he wasn't put under pressure with the length of his line out throw. And it ain't always the hooker's fault, as hookers are very keen to tell you and have every right to do so. It's a combination between them and those who try to take the ball. Horn to Mitchell. Tackle from Sean Maitland. Lucas. Lost by Warburton. This already the Lions' best score ever against New, ever against New South Wales. Twelve years ago, 41 points, their previous best. So they've topped that. Skelton is really blowing now. Lost that ball in the tackle. Do you look at him now? He can barely set himself up for this scrum. As we look at the minute master, it's very red on the right hand side. Lots of penalties in the first half. A late try, and then a three more in the second half to turn the foundations into a launch pad for Brisbane. Try scorers Sexton, half penny two, Croft and Davies. Where's the scrum going this time? Turning round, but Heaslip realising that. Reacts quickly. Youngs to Parling and Warburton. Here's Farrell. Looks to try and find the angle. Volavola -vola comes across. Throws a good pass. Out to Bernard Foley. He drills it long and the Waratahs need the respite at the moment. I don't think there's much left in their tank. It's a major plus for Australian and Sydney rugby. Bernard Foley has been very good indeed today. Under strength up front, some of these Waratahs have covered themselves. If not in glory, they've certainly tarnished themselves. It's been a proud performance and this guy Foley, he does look the real deal. As does Jonathan Davis there. One line out lost by Hibbert. Does he go long again or does he set it? Well, look at that work there yeah. from Alan Wynne Jones. Basketball. Crawford regathered. Another statement from Alan Wynne Jones. Ben Youngs to Jamie Heaslip. Farrell and Jonathan Davies, long pass to Sean Maitland. Ref 
free Jakob Paper almost in the way. Good duck, though, got out of the way. And Dan Lidiot takes over halfway. Ben Young's again to Jamie Heaslip. Final moments of this match. Do the Lions have one more try in them? Already done enough. More than enough. Alan Wynne Jones again. Ben Young's. Farrell. Jonathan Davies takes them on again. Got lovely touches, great tracking as we said, but also a whole load of strength to go with his game. Dan Lydia. Nice rugby here. Good pattern. Ben Young's really looking like a team, aren't they? Carney. Dan Cole just protects around the fringe of that ruck. Lydiot. Just keep ball and why not? Jamie Roberts, the one casualty of the evening. We will learn more as the night goes on on that, no doubt. Dan Cole. Farrell and Jonathan Davis tackled by Foley. Again, Farrell very late, very flat, nice play. But it is a turnover and Gilbert gets it out wide to Kingston and Horn. And is it AJ Gilbert to get the final say for the Waratahs? Suddenly the crowd come to life. In goes Vola Vola. Somehow, and it's Alan Wynne Jones again who saves the day for the British and Irish Lions. Not only did he get back there, he made sure he was in the way. Not sure how legal it was, but Ben Youngs, has he got it off? Yes, he has. And the Lions have won by 47 points to 17. They are halfway through the tour now. They are still unbeaten. This, in all honesty, only the second genuine test thus far. But the Lions coming through it, as they did in Brisbane, but they've come through it with even more going for them in this victory. The Lions were expected to win this game, and in the end they won it well, but they were forced to play some very decent rugby by a Waratahs team that take huge amount of credit, not just the courage of their game, but their commitment and their ability to ask questions. The Lions won this game by 30 points, but Foley and that man, Drew, Mitchell asked questions in the wide channel. There is still work to be done there. There is still the question of what do they do with the line out strategy? Everything went to the front today, and that was good. But when they went long, it still didn't work. So, a couple of questions. But overall, let's just put this in context not about Brisbane, but about Sydney. This game finishes with an exclamation mark. A 30 point margin doesn't do any justice to this game. The Waratahs were in it for 80, they gave their all and they forced the Lions to produce some very fine rugby indeed. Best win over the uh, New South Wales team uh, and that is a very good way to head off to Canberra. It really is. The Waratahs have had a reasonable day, the Lions have had a great one. Sam, was that exactly the, the hit out that the Lions are looking for before the test next week? Yeah, definitely. You know, the Waratahs were really tough. Um, you know, the scoreboard didn't reflect how well they played, I think. And uh, I think we definitely stepped up again this week. We knew we had to. Um, I thought the forwards did a great job and the backs were very clinical. So very pleased with the performance all around. The physicality tonight was certainly there. Last week it was an up-tempo game, but tonight the Lions had to grind periods of the game out. Yeah, we knew that was uh, it was going to probably end up that way, you know, watching the Waratahs. Um, quite similar to us, actually, running off 9 and 10, being very direct. And whoever was going to win those collisions, really, um, would go a long way towards winning that match. And I thought we did pretty well in that department. Feeling within the group, obviously, is very high. Uh, undefeated on the tour thus far. The business end of the, of the tour begins next week, doesn't it? Yeah, of course. You know, that's the has to be what everyone's looking forward to. But, uh, you know, the next week is going to be immensely tough. Um, I found that out, you know, with Wales, you know, um, Australia, immensely tough side to, to play. And uh, that's going to be another challenge again next Saturday. Test match preparation starts on Monday, or starts tomorrow, effectively. Uh, the, the Lions are ready for it. Yeah, well, you know, we got another game against the Brumbies, um, which is another, gonna, gonna be another great hit out for us. So, um, you know, until that game's over, it'll be hard to look forward towards the test, because we're always just sort of next game. But, you know, next week we'll have an edge. I'm sure there'll be more fans in Brisbane. Um, 
and uh, you know, we're certainly um, you know, game on. I know you got the Brumbies on Tuesday night, but I uh, look forward to seeing you in Brisbane next Saturday night. All the best. Thank you very much. Cheers. Brendan Cannon with uh, the Lions captain, of course, Sam Warburton. The real greatness, well, that is still to come, isn't it? That will be decided in the series itself. It's Canberra on Tuesday night against the Brumbies, and that will be a test in itself. The Brumbies have played really well in the Super Rugby competition this year, but so too the Waratahs. We said earlier they made big strides under Michael Checker. Lying mid-table, taking into account all three countries. But that represents a reasonable season. And despite all their absent players, they provided a stern test to the British and Irish Lions in this match here in Sydney tonight. The Lions will return to Sydney for the third test in the big stadium. And over 80,000 will be there. But tonight... A sellout here to see the Waratahs, and they've seen a Lions victory. Let's get some more reaction. Dave, a really courageous performance from the Waratahs tonight. Yeah, we, we hung in there, you know, I thought we, we, did, we played some good rugby, and uh, they're a quality team, and we know what we need to do to go that next level as a squad, so great experience for a young team. What was pleasing uh, as a supporter and watching the game was obviously Michael Checker did say, leave nothing in the dressing room. I don't think any of the Waratahs did that tonight. Yeah, you know, you get one, one crack at them in your career and uh, you don't want to leave much out there. So I thought the boys' effort was really good and uh, we just got shown up a few uh, technical errors. They, they spread the ball wide really well and it hurt us. So you know, really, I hope our, our fans are proud of the performance. For you personally, you're in camp with the Wallabies this week. What did you take out of being in camp with the Wallabies into tonight's game? Oh, look, it's, it's obvious it's going to be a tough, tough first test. Um, they're gelling quite well and... They've got a clear game plan that they're executing well as well. So yeah, it's going to be physical and it's going to be a tough test, but you know, the preparation in, in Wallaby camp has been great. Where do you think the Lions present the biggest challenge for the Wallabies next week? Oh, just that, just that combination between playing nice and tight and then you know, before we know it, the ball's on the edge. Um, they do that quite well, so they're forced to defend, defend well around the ruck, but also on the edges. So you've got to, you've got to be well on your game defensively and uh, that physicality as well. And Dave, tonight here, captain of the Waratahs, just under 41,000 supporters here at Allianz Stadium. What does that mean for you being the captain of the team? Yeah, a special experience, very proud moment for me and all the boys to run out here in front of our fans and uh, hope they enjoyed it and we're, we're really trying to move forward as a club and this support means a lot to us and uh, hopefully they enjoy some good, good matches for 2014. A memorable night, well done Dave. Thanks Kenna, cheers. Yeah, a number of the Waratahs saying throughout the course of the week they had never played at a full SFS before, but that is the draw of the Lions. And right on cue, with just one week to go until the first test, the men in red have hit their best. What a game we have seen here this evening. Sam Warburton, well, I think that settles the uh, questions around his role with the team. He is ready to lead the Lions into battle next week for sure. Some big performances today, and I'm sure the head coach is a happy man. He's ready to talk to Will. Warren, after some of the games so far, it's been a bit muted in terms of the on-field action from both the players and the, the non-players. Seems a bit of a buzz tonight. Outstanding performance. Yeah, the great crowd and uh, really pleased. They, they put it up to us physically and well, the boys responded extremely well. It's, um, yeah, that, was a, that was a performance out of the top draw and I think the last sort of 12 minutes or so we're down to 14 men and they just kept bugging away and dominated that period as well. So I'm really proud of that performance. And what areas of the first half were you really targeting in terms of going after the Waratahs and what areas did the boys really deliver for you there? Yeah, I thought defensively we were strong and we, they, they were sort of playing a three-pod system and we, you know, we, we spoke about that at half-time, we just had to fix up a few things. But we're coming off our line pretty good, I thought our, our contact, contact was good, our rucking, anyway, we delivered some good front foot ball for our backs and, um, and the set piece again was excellent, the scrum was strong and the line-out was good as well. You know, we've, you know, we didn't... We showed a little bit tonight, but not, not too much. And, uh, and the boys just kept working hard for, for the full 80 minutes and the impact coming off the bench was excellent as well. I know you don't like to pick out too many players, but just before we were chatting about some of the guys who had outstanding performances, who were the guys you thought really led the Lions tonight? I thought Alan jones I thought uh, his physicality, his presence out there was, it was outstanding, carried, um, defended really well. You know, I thought he was a, a real cog in the middle for us. And, Marco Vinopolo again carried well, you know, John Davis was good in the midfield, so, so you know, some really good uh, pleasing performance, half-pennies, goal-kicking, great uh, great start for Simon Zebo too, so, 
you know, but it's a really happy squad at the moment. You now the boys are sort of egging each other on, supporting each other, and yeah, it's nice to be a part of it. Were there any targets tonight you didn't hit? Um, probably have a look at that tomorrow. Yeah, so you know, it's always you're always disappointed when you concede a, a try or two. So you know, there was a few things that we need to look at where they opened us a little bit of a short line out over the back, and you know, so and that quick line, quick line out where they've scored on, they've caught us a little bit by surprise. We haven't got in there quick enough. So um, there's always things for us to work on, but you know, generally pretty pleased with where we're at. A lot of people crossing fingers back home. Jamie Roberts, any update? Yeah, I think so. Um, he's jumped, torn a bit of a hamstring, but I'm not, I'm not 100% sure. I haven't spoken to the medics about that, so you know, hopefully it's not too bad. Um, you know, we've had a couple already, so uh, we'll just have to wait and see until I get in change rooms and, and talk to the medics. Appreciate seeing uh, see Canberra. Yeah. Cheers, Will. Thank you. Yes. Cheers. Oh, got some of the players that Warren's just been talking about. Uh, the pace of the game just lifted in that first 10 minutes. What were the what was the chat in the change room before the game? Uh, it was a case of Piet go out, um, use the ball we had. I think against combined country had a lot of opportunity, didn't make the most of them. And we knew there'd be a few and far between um, today. Um, that's when we got them, we tried to make the most of them, especially after the first 20, 30 minutes. And in terms of the line-out, Tom, there's been a few questions, just a couple of uh, areas of concern, but tonight went really well. What have you been focusing on in training? No, I see, you know, it's all about reps. I see it's new guys coming together, different systems. And it takes a few weeks for this, you know, for that to settle down. So, you know, we've worked hard in training. Went well tonight. We've got some great guys in charge of the lineup. You know, Paul O'Connell, Jeff Parling in charge, Alan Wynn. And uh, it functioned well tonight. We've got some good, good uh, go forward ball for the backs to have a go off. And one of the things about this tour so far is you come out of the second half as though it's the start of a game. What sort of messages are the guys being given in terms of the area, the key areas to focus on at the start of each second half? Uh, it's breakdown, 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 and every, everything. Um, you know, we, we can't play without the ball. That's when we got it in attack or defence. We want to try and get that ball. Uh, it's a case of not burning ourselves in both. Um, you know, and a few times early on, we probably were a bit um, negligible on the 15 metre when we go wide. At the breakdown, and as, as you saw, once we start winning, getting around the corner, spreading them a bit, the holes are opening. And in terms of the handling, what you're working on with Rob Howley, you guys played like centres today. You've been given a free reign to, free reign to offload. Um, uh, to an extent, yeah, obviously, you know, you want to be playing in the right areas, not throwing all these, you know, 50-50 balls, but, you know, we, you know, given the licence, you know, the quality of play we have in the side, from sort of the second rows to the back five, um, is immense, you know, if those guys can throw the ball, they'll throw it, and you know, you've got the quality of play, especially out in the backs, to pick up on those balls, read you, and, uh, and create chances. And you were trucking it up the middle, going hard, making some hard yards, you're enjoying the physical side, back playing and on the lines jersey. Yeah, it's a, it's a case of numbers for type five. Um, carries, rucks and get around the corner and you know you, you want to even spread if you can but ultimately you, you want to peek at one of those you don't want to be anonymous in the game and you know as a type five I think the first 30 we, we got through it and then we st you know everybody started to put their hand up and as you say uh, get the hands on the ball. And in terms of scrum half you had uh, Phillips initially and then Ben Youngs came on seems to be a lot of chat a lot of bossing clarity of call from the nines and tens? Uh, it's perfect what you need you know that the nines and tens are there to boss you around the pitch you kind of get your hands on the ball, they'll tell you where to run, you do it. You know, they're in charge of the game. I thought they bossed it very well, especially when, you know, when the changes come on, you know, Benny Youngs comes on, he bosses it well again. So it's kind of exactly what you need. You don't, you don't need a lull when you know, players come on new in the second half. You want the, you know, the tempo to increase almost. Now, you've been on last tours before. Both of you understand the intensity of the lift on a test match week. Any areas tonight where the Waratahs test you, you felt you didn't quite come up? Uh, you know, as I said earlier, there's a few breakdowns we probably uh, want to shore up because they'll definitely come at us there. Because, uh, like I said before the game, there's more breakdowns in the game than anything else at, uh, at present. Um, so we'll probably shore a few of those up. Uh, other than that, probably look to get, win the far side battle um, when we get midfield breakdowns, etc. But on a whole, it's pretty good. There's always you know, bits and pieces to work on, bits to add, uh, and you know, we'll go away and do that. When you see the fastest man on the Waratahs side opposite you, you just hand off and go. Is it just letting everyone in Australia know how much wheels, how much pace you got under the bonnet? Oh, it's more the fact that these guys are shocking up the middle and tying their legs out, and I tend to hang out on the wing a little bit. But uh, uh, potentially, I probably should get in the middle a bit more. But you know, it's, if you get a chance, you just you hope and uh, and put your head down. And sometimes it comes off, sometimes it doesn't. So I think uh, Mitchell stood me up on the outside here at one point. So you know, there's a few things for us to work on. But like I say, when you're surrounded by the, you know, the class of players you've got on this side, it kind of makes it makes it a little bit easier for you. Outstanding achievement, boys. Appreciate it. Cheers. 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 Well, both test lines four years ago and off the back of today, perhaps both test lines this time around as well. Big performances from big men today for the Lions and a lovely answer from Warren Gatlin. We showed a bit.
but not too much, and then a wry smile. We will hopefully have an update for you on Jamie Roberts before we go off air this evening. But just to let you know about the live uh, sport that we have for you, coming up later on today here on uh, Sky Sports 2 HD, we have uh, the current holders of the Euro uh, Championship Under-21 trophy, Spain up against Norway. Uh, the golf continues at Merion as well. Mickelson obviously leading, Paul to Donald and Rose going nice as well. Day three of that for you from five o'clock on Sky Sports 4 HD. Tomorrow it's the ICC Champions Trophy again. England need to beat the Kiwis to book their place in the semi-finals. That's from 10 on 1 HD. And then on Monday, Sri Lanka go up against Australia from 12.30 on the same channel. Now, our next live rugby for you from out here in Australia is on Tuesday. The Lions heading up to the Aussie capital tomorrow and they take on the Super Rugby Table Toppers. It is the Brumbies against the Lions from 10 o'clock and that is on Sky Sports 1 HD. And then, of course, this time next week, it is the big one. It's always been special Lions, it's very, very special. There's no other team like it. It's the ultimate for a rugby player in the British Isles. Lions rugby, that is something that fills the stands to the last man. It is almost upon us and the Lions are picking up speed as they head back to Brisbane for the first test against the Wallabies. Our coverage starts from 10.30 next Saturday and that is only on Sky Sports 1 HD for you. Uh, Stuart has come to join uh, Scott and Paul for a bit of a debrief on what we have seen here at the Sydney Football Stadium this evening. We spent a lot of time in studio talking about weak opposition for the Lions. How much was that a factor today? Or conversely, how much have the Lions be really begun to hit their straps? Tells you how strong Super Rugby is. That's a team with nine of its first team out, and they played some tremendous rugby. Um, you know, I thought, uh, as Sam Orbiton said, 30 points was a bit of an injustice to them. They played some tremendous rugby, and they put a lot of pressure on the Lions in various areas. But in the end, the Lions came through. There is so much dynamism, and I think the most important thing today is the fact, apart from A, you really felt that you were on a Lions tour. I don't know you guys, but you got the goosebumps going there. And B, certain players said, I am your test man. Gatlin now will have a very good idea of 13, 14 of his team. Really? Yeah, there was answers definitely given to Warren Gatland, and I, I think he'd be a lot more sure of, of who he's going to go. Alan Wynne jones was outstanding, yeah. and I think he's really played his way in Tom Croft, as we talked about as well. And Jonathan Davis, he's... With, with Jamie Roberts picking up an injury, maybe in the 12 channel, he played so well, you just think, where where can we put him in the side? So I think he's coming into the equation now as well. Yeah, Scotty. For Sam Warburton as well, you know, there's been a lot of talk over the last couple of weeks. I thought he came in today, I thought he was superb. His tackle count was huge, you know, he got over the contact area, he really did work hard in those areas, and he led from the front, and that was absolutely wonderful uh, today. But you've got to say as well, a, th a couple of th issues, scrum struggle to touch in the first half contact area although Sam did particularly well I still think we like the back rower at the contact area yeah. smashing over the top of that contact area getting that quick ball for Mike Phillips Mike did what he needed to do today but he didn't see him go forward you know like he'll have to do next Saturday so there's little things they need to work on but a wonderful performance overall yeah. uh, and one area that I was really impressed with is the tight play the mall in particular I thought they mauled very tight very cohesively they'll need that in the test match the lineout was very good as well. Last one went to the back. Most of the most of the ball all went to the front, so it's quite hard to judge on that. But for the game plan, they will need ball off the tail. Yeah. And uh, I, I think the breakdown, as, as Scott said, that's that's one of the issues that they've got to but, keep working sure. on. But the, this is it's a quid pro quo. I mean, it's so difficult, isn't it? Because Lydia clearly is the man who makes the tackles and he hits the breakdowns. He's the strong, hard man, but Lydia is not the line-out man. Now, when Gatland says we're keeping a lot back, the line-out still has to be a yeah. major part of it because but they're winning ball at the front and they're winning ball at the middle. That's the best they're we've seen it on the tour so far, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, but, but only because they were limited in what they were trying to do. Now, when they play Australia, they will want to get George North and, you know, pray God he's fit, JB Roberts coming down at that 10-12 channel. But and the back ball is the best there. If you go Tom Croft, you're not going to get that. You're not what you get are going to get there still is Paul O'Connell. How many times have we seen the ball thrown to Paul O'Connell mm. in this tour? I don't think we've seen a handful. So, so, you so think what we see, him, move I, him to the tail. I don't, what, I, what I'm saying is, I think he's going to he's going to yeah. come back into it. He's going to he's going to come up in the middle. He may take three steps back and go up. I'm sure that's what they're practicing mm. yeah. on the, the training field. But at the moment, 
they're not doing it. They're not showing well, their hands. Why would you show? There's exactly. going to be loads of variation. You, know, you, can, you can put a second row anywhere in a number eight up the front. You said, Jamie, yeah. he's going to take a lot of ball at the front as I, well today. The flip side of that, though, is how much of a concern not to give it a proper try in a, in a, in a game like this and just take well, what you've been practising well, into like, a test Yeah, but you have a look at that. I know one. We, we know, right? Scott Johnson, now coach of Scotland, yeah. he has told me, yes. he sat down there and said, look, I, I followed every... Team. I followed every line out. Yeah. By the time we got to the third test, I could have called your line out for you. So that's what they that's what they're going against. <laughs> yeah. They're going to say, okay, we're not showing you anything. Okay. Where well, we're going to come and I think they've done that in the scrum. I think they've done the line out. They almost showed a little bit when you have a look at the, the driving ball, like like you said. But it's it's the other bits that they do, like uh, Paul O'Connell, the way he carried today, the way he defended. And Alwyn Jones was absolutely wonderful. One guy needed to step up and he was magnificent magnificent today right from the start huge tackles needed a carry we were talking about gray the way he did carry that was why they scored the try in the right hand corner yeah alan jones he's had a great work rate in the other games but he wasn't doing that extra few things that you need to do around the park but he was a lot more prominent getting out there and it's that leg drive you know that's what they need to do when you're playing against australia to get in behind them of course in a line out as well very very strong look at that athleticism there with a the one-handed catch and, and at the very end, the turnover. He's not the youngest second row in this tour party, but he's determined. You know, in South Africa, he went there with this huge reputation, and it didn't quite happen, which is no surprise, because yeah. he gets back here and Victor Matfield. But this is Alan Wynn's chance to say, yeah. I'm not just a big player in Europe and in the Six Nations, I'm a world figure. And I thought that O'Connell and Wynn Jones. They gelled like a test team today, no doubt about yeah, but it. But still, when you look at that, right, you talk, you talk about engines, you talk about Paul O'Connell of an engine, you talk about Alwyn Jones of an engine, Paul, uh, Tom Croft, he's got an engine, you know, and that's why they can go for the full 80 minutes. And, they, you know, I, and they, they really did step up. But for me today, those three individuals really did set the heart of that pack taking them forward not only that but look at this you know in the air you know that could that could have been australians nfl you know nfl it was absolutely incredible and when you think of the performances they put in under pressure because what we're talking about is seven days out under pressure that is why these performances are so good for me because it was almost last chance for saloon for some of these before next weekend tom croft you know people have to remember he was a late inclusion for our mate Alan Quinney Quinlan. on the last tour in 2009, yeah. he came along, not being in the initial squad, was one of the stars in that test series against yeah. a mighty Springbok team. When we talk about Jamie Roberts being a big match player, this guy Tom Croft is one, and I don't know you guys, I thought before the game, O'Brien, Lydia, Croft, which way do you go? And I still have some concerns about not having Lydia and O'Brien at that breakdown. But I think Croft is such a match winner that he, he's and played it, his way in as a starter. I think the bit that really solves it for me and why he is the guy and deserves it is that try down the blind. And we, we, it's not the first time we've seen this. We've seen this so many times for Leicester from England and for the Lions last time yeah. out. And with the way the Lions game plan is, they want to have a, a big runner out wide who, can, who has pace yeah. and, and it's dynamic. He has that, he has the line out, he has the work rate. Uh, you know, for me, I think today he's uh, answered one of Warren Gatlin's questions. You think I, he I, has? I, for, for me, anyhow, yes. Yeah. And I think that's why Toby Faletau has to play. Because he plays a different type of game to he slips. He slips a little bit wider. They play the similar type of game. So what you've got to do is you've got to bring Faletau in. He'll make the tackles round. He'll come in. He'll make those little yards around the ruck. He'll hit the rucks. He'll hit malls. And that way you get a nice balance in the back row. For me, that is a wonderfully balanced back row. When you look at the athleticism of Croft, you look at the hard work. Doesn't make many mistakes of Faletau and Warburton. Over the top of that ball. That's all you've got to worry about is Gil, Cooper, get yeah. there first, make a nuisance to yourself, win the ball so we can use it. Things looking good up front, I think it's probably fair to say for the Lions. What did you make of the overall cohesion behind the pack today? I mean, we're going to have a look at half pennies try, which is arguably the score mm. of the tour so far for the men in red, but you, uh, is uh, it where you would like to see it? Uh, Mike Phillips seems to be in third gear at the moment, but I think he knows what he's doing. This is a glorious try, and it's what the this is the template for the Lions. Sexton on the gain line, the late change of angle when it gives you nowhere to go, pick off a prop, Roberts goes through there, but it could be O'Driscoll, it could be Davis, it could be North coming off his wing, it could be Tuolangi, and then the bang, bang, the angles have been worked on, I think that's quite impressive, I, I think some of their wide passing every now and again from first phase isn't great, but when Sexton gets flat, 
and he can get flat because everyone's scared to death of Phillips's power. When he gets there and he starts turning it in field, suddenly, you know, you've got a loose head prop with a weak arm. Boom, that happens in a test match. He might yeah. be Ben Robinson, but he's got no chance. I'd be yeah. impressed. We haven't even mentioned really Lee half pennies and what he brought to the game is place kicking uh, and also what impressed me most which I think is a, is a huge fill up is the way he hit the line. We hadn't seen that yet in the tour but the way he was coming his timing his flatness of t receiving the pass yeah. was superb because great reading of the game and you know I, I can't remember a game where there's so many candidates for a man of the match. Okay let's head back downstairs and join Will who's got two of the backs. Simon, just tell us about your emotions over the past few days when you got the call up and then found yourself in acres of space in the first minute of the game. Yeah, um, very excited, very excited to get out here and uh, join the squad. And um, it was just a great feeling putting on the red jersey, getting to line up. And uh, a bit of a rusty finish there in the first couple of seconds. I thought this fella put me away, but a um, small bit of rust still on the boots. But uh, yeah, yeah, happy, happy to get an 80 under my belt. And in terms of your role, say, in that first half, you seem to pop up at first receiver more often than, than Jonathan Sexton. Were you given free reign to just go out and, and play what you see and get involved as much as possible? Yeah, the, the coaches are very um, pro expressing yourself and um, they just uh, give me a licence to just go into first receiver and um, just try and get my hands on the ball. So, um, yeah, with you fellas like this uh, lurking around the midfield, it makes your job a bit easier. There's a bit more holes when the defence will be focusing on guys like that. But, yeah, it's a uh, it's, it's, it's great uh, setup and a great type of rugby we're playing. So. We've had uh, Warren talk about the team performance, but how pleased, Jonathan, are you with your individual performance tonight? Uh, I was glad to get my hands on the ball a bit more. Um, you know, I think the boys played well. I thought up front, uh, they dominated again. You know, the, the power we have up front is quite dangerous and it gives opportunities for us behind. And, um, you know, we'd be reasonably happy tonight. We still left a few tries on the pitch, I think, but, um, you know, it was um, a good job done. And what targets is Rob Howley setting in terms of a backline? I just think with, a, with a dang, how dangerous our backline is with the likes of Simon, George, Alex behind, you know, we've got to make sure we put these guys in space and, you know, we've got to make sure we have time on the ball. So Rob's put a lot of emphasis on us, but, um, you know, we just got to keep working hard and, um, you know, it's a big week's preparation for the game Tuesday and obviously the first test. And so, I mean, straight off the plane, straight into the, onto the field, Lions game, the pace of the game, OK, or just nothing like you've ever experienced before? Um, it was, there was times where I was thinking, oh my God, I need another set of lungs, but um, no, it was, it was great to just be on the field and you don't think too much about those things when you're, when you're concentrating on a performance, but uh, it's a day I'll never forget and happy to be a part of it. And in terms of the midfield, obviously there's obviously Brian and Manu and we hope Jamie gets, gets fit, very strong area. What are you trying to do, what are the midfield trying to do in terms of that gain line and breaking the Australian midfield down? I, you know, with the power we got, the likes of Jamie and Manu, they, they give go forward and you know, the experience Brian had and he's been on great form and we just got to make sure we keep working hard as a, a unit and make sure we keep pushing ourselves and I think we're doing that on this tour and you know, it's, uh, it's a tough competition so you know, we just got to make sure we keep our heads down and work hard. And in terms of the defensive channel in the, in the width, there's a couple of areas at times in the Reds game and again tonight, just found out and just the, the opposition have found width, what, what's the concern there? I just think we just need to make sure we're doing all on the, on the same page. I think you know, at times we've got ones going up, ones staying off. we just got to make sure there's more communication. I'm sure Faz will make sure this week we work hard on that. And, uh, you know, it's minor details. We've got to make sure we nail those things. Boys, good luck with selection next week. Thank you very much. Cheers, 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 yeah, pity Warren Gatland. I think those selection meetings for the first test are going to take quite some time. A number of players putting their hands up today for selection for that first test. We obviously picked a team on Tuesday. Uh, last week and that has had a bit of a tweak we're going to go uh, through it once again with Stuart with Paul and Scott when we come back but the performance of the tour so far from the Lions they have motored to a comfortable victory over the New South Wales Waratahs plenty more reaction to come from here at the Sydney Football Stadium before we're done The quad series continues in South Africa today. It's coming up very shortly for you, actually. Samoa against Italy is the first game of the day from 10 past one on Sky Sports 2 HD. There's a channel change if you'd like to see the Scots in action against the host from four o'clock, and that is on 3 HD. But here at the Sydney Football Stadium, one week out from the first test between the Lions and uh, the Wallabies, the Lions have hit form at just the right time. A couple for Lee Halfpenny this evening, imperious with the boot as well. 
and they are picking up speed at exactly the right time. It was a good Waratahs outfit. Do not doubt that for one minute. 47-17 the final score, though. Halfpenny, as we said, with a couple. Jonathan Sexton with the opener. Tom Croft with a stunner yet again. And it was Jonathan Davis who rounded things off. As we said, Halfpenny, superb off the kicking tee. Owen Farrell came on and uh, converted the final try as well. The Waratahs spirited but outclassed in the end. Now the tour moves on to the Australian capital. Tuesday evening is the uh, final warm-up game prior to the first test. The last chance for anyone to force their way into selection. Warren Gatland's already said he will have his selection meeting for the first test after this game. And it's against the Super Rugby tabletop as the Brumbies. 10 o'clock on Sky Sports 1 HD. And I know you're not going to miss this. Australia against the Lions from Brisbane. 10.30 for that. And that is on Sky Sports 1 HD. And we are going to fan the flames of selection as we were doing on Tuesday. Uh, a lot of guys here, obviously, uh, with a lot to say about those that have been uh, in the frame so far. But we're just going to quickly show you the forwards first of all. Now, if you were with us on Tuesday, you will be familiar with this. And I should think you will spot the one change. And that is in the second row where Alan Wynne-Jones has come in uh, for Richie Gray. So perhaps Gray with one last chance on Tuesday to wrestle that back. But it's Adam Jones, Hibbard and Mako Vunipola in the front row. O'Connell and Alan Wynne-Jones in, in the second row. And Warburton obviously answering any uh, questions today. Faletau and Croft on the blind side. Um, happy with that? Is that is that where you think this is uh, where this is going to go on uh, on the selection meeting on Tuesday? Yeah, I think there's going to be a few tight calls. I think uh, Corby Zero scrummaging might be one for Vinopola. Uh, for me, I think Vinopola's form has probably got him there. Uh, Hibbard, you know, the one line out to the back again that was missed. But I think the power that he brings up front, uh, he he he'd be a starter for me. And uh, you know, Adam Jones, I think as well, he's, he's a starter. So I think that as a front row block is uh, I I'd be quite happy to go with. The back row, uh, Warren Gatland has already said he's going to take most of the selection meeting. I mean, do you feel that he's got a balance there that, that can get the better of the Wallabies with, with what you've gone with? Yes, I think he has. Uh, we've got to reiterate this is our worst selection, not uh, Warren, yeah, Warren, Warren Gatlin's. And, uh, you know, this is what we feel at, has a good balance to the back row. And uh, we've talked about the way the Croft went today and uh, has gone. Uh, Faletau, I think he just makes... There's everything well you know he, he just gets in he gets tighter uh, around the ruck around the mall uh, he makes his tackles and uh, Sam Warburton you know really did stand up but there's a lot of tight calls there you know he slips been going very well O'Brien's been going well you have a look at Lydiet uh, could go in there you know Gray we had in there so it's been absolutely uh, very difficult to put it together but you can make uh, claims for other people like you're going to do now, Walt. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> but no, I, I think it's the bench and it's, it's tactics and especially one of the front rows. It's the first time that the Lions can bring on a whole front row during a game. Yeah. I think that's going to be very important as well. So are you going to go with your strongest scrum or your strongest ball carriers first? Well, it's, it's whatever type of game they're going to play. Are they going to play that hard, fast, high tempo game? And, and then you have those calls. And then also look at, like Sean O'Brien is someone who's really stood out. But for, for me, I, I think Warren Gallant might be looking at him, right? He, I can bring him in at six or seven or even possibly eight, and I can use him to turn a game. So I think the bench is going to be very, very important, and Richie Gray maybe as well, who's Richie an impact Gray. player on, uh, as a second-row bench player as well. As I'm saying, the bench could be nearly as important as that starting. What uh, bench back. forwards would you go with, Well, if, it, bearing in mind that selection? It's, it's very difficult when, when you look at the way that we've been talking and we've been watching the games, and we say, he'd be fantastic off the bench. Oh, Brian, he'd be brilliant off the bench. We'd have a look, oh, Tuprik, he'd be wonderful off the bench. Oh, Gray, he'd be wonderful off We've yeah. got 15 on the bench. <laughs> yeah. you know, and that's where we are at the moment. So not only are we talking about 15 guys to start the first test, we're talking about 23. We're yeah. talking about 23, and we're talking about some guys who've been incredibly unlucky outside those boundaries as well. You know, do they pick Youngs or do they pick Best? Are they going to go for two big, yeah. big men? I thought Youngs was superb today. His line was very good with Croft. He came on there. His tackle count was wonderful. You know, the first time he got picked up and, 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 and driven back, you think, oh, is he a bit... But, uh, you know, he, he, there's, there's a case for everybody. And what is so pleasing, so many players are playing well. Yeah. A lot of people out here and particularly Lions fans, would expect the Lions potentially mm. to try and get the better up front with the Wallabies. Have yeah. you seen that power in evidence? Do you feel that that is where the Lions can get the upper hand? Potentially, yes, but the refereeing is going to have a massive role to play in this tour. Two Southern Hemisphere referees, before we get Romain Poit, will they allow the Lions to scrummage? The phrase at the moment here amongst the media is scrummage long. Lions, European scrums take a long time. The Aussies like to get down, get it away, get rid of it so that's going to be a factor and 
Scott, what Scott said about the balance of the back row, I found very interesting because I think cross performance today has helped Warren Gatland because I can't split Heaslip and, and Falatau. But as Scotty said, balance is the key in this back row. And I think Falatau will help Warburton and it'll free Croft to play. But the balance isn't just the back row, guys. The balance is yeah. the whole pack because we asked the question, is this a back row to take on the Aussies? Yeah. Australia's breakdown work is not about the back row. It's about the pack. Yeah. They are brilliant. Their front row are really good. Horwell is superb. They understand the whole concept. So when we talk breakdown, you don't talk about Warburton on his own. Warburton on his own will get the same amount of benefit as Richie McCaw got in December against England. When England hit him with eight forwards, it has to be a complete effort. One man or one unit will not be enough. But very, very quickly, so breakdown and line-out, were they better today? Because they have been areas of concern. They were a lot better. Yeah. One of the points I was going to make is that we're picking guys in form now. They haven't played against a back row yet. Right. They haven't played against the front five that can compete yet. So yeah. what we're talking about is that guys who are on form playing against sides that just aren't yeah. particularly good. Next Saturday, they're going to be very good. They're going to be well prepared. They're going to understand what they need to do. And that way, you know, Warren Gatlin will understand the type of game plan he wants to go in with as well, which we're not privy to. Yeah, OK. Um, providing the forwards do get the ball, these are the players that will hopefully use it for the Lions. And this is unchanged from Tuesday. Phillips and Sexton at half-back, Robertson O'Driscoll in the centres, Cuthbert half-penny. <laughs> and North, but obviously the big uh, question mark off the back of today is Jamie Roberts, will he be fit or won't he? And I suppose the flip side of that is that if Jonathan Davis isn't selected, he has to count as one of the more unlucky players, and given the form he's in. Yeah, but it's about balance again. We talked about it in the back row. They may want to go to Alangi, because what the Lions are looking at here is the power of a Welshman at nine, the subtlety of an Irishman at ten, power of a Welshman at twelve, subtlety of an Irishman at thirteen. They're the four creators. Fourteen and eleven are the power men smash through half pennies showing that he could pick angles and he's got subtlety so that is a a brilliantly constructed and balanced <laughs> back line it really is and so Tua Lange is the obvious choice if Roberts is out but I just think what you can do is use George North even more even more in coming off that 13 channel as we saw in Hong Kong and go Davis because Tua Lange I just think doesn't have the distribution skills yeah. All right yeah, I think that reinforces the need for Cuthbert's uh, ball carrying as well if you don't have that power of Roberts at 12. Uh, one player I was very impressed with is Ben Youngs, though, as well. I, thought, I don't think Phillips played as well. Now no. He's getting from slow ball, yeah. but I thought Youngs was uh, very sharp. Every, he's got very little game time on this trip, but I think he's been very good. He's got a great track record, of course, against Australia. Um, but he, he certainly he, put but, his hand but, up. But, but I, you know, Phillips, I think, is definitely the starter, he, but he's certainly uh, not too far behind. Ben Youngs is the form scrum half on this tour. But Will Genia is the absolute key to the Wallabies. Mm. And I'm certain that Gatlin thinks Phillips' power yeah. get to Genia. Yeah. That's yeah. why, no matter what Youngs does, I think Phillips starts Test 1. Yeah, and John Davis is going to be maybe the unluckiest one in, in the back line, really. Mm. You, know, you, you mentioned it earlier, the Alan Bateman yep. of the yeah. 97 Lions. Though Alan Bateman yeah. was probably the best centre on, on so, that tour. He did everything. He did everything well. And uh, John Davis is in that calibre. Yeah. You know, and he could be the unlucky one to miss out. Brief yeah. final question. Is that team good enough to win next Saturday? Of course it is. Yeah. Of course it is, Alex. You Optimism thought I would doubt. Out of you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've uh, seen that all season. I, I, really I, think it I is. nearly fell I, over there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I agree it is once nothing happens to Johnny Sexton. Yeah. See, again, he was imperious mm. today. The way he, he, he just runs the Do you know the, the funny thing? So Nobody's well. talked about it. I know, yeah. isn't it great? Nobody's yeah. talked about Perhaps it. Perhaps yeah. more to come. Of course, do st uh, tune into Sky Sports News for the very latest on Jamie Roberts and that injury. But lots more international rugby to come. Samoa against Italy is up next here on Sky Sports 2 HD. And we have the Springboks against the Scots for you a little bit later on. That's 4 o'clock. And you can catch that uh, channel change, actually, on Sky Sports 3 HD for that. So lots still to come. Thanks very much indeed to the guys for their thoughts. Performance of the tour so far, no doubt, 5 out of 5. And on to Canberra. Bye-bye.